What's going on, everybody? How's everybody doing? Welcome back. <laughs> We're back, baby. Let's go. Oh, boy. Already out the gate. So many people to thank already. Alyssa, thank you for the cheers. Let's look. Let's take a look here. Pi, Wolf Pack of One, Electro Jesus. Thank you all for the subs already. I appreciate that. Thank you. Secure Greatness with the sub as well. Thank you so much. Even before I got here. Even before I got here. What's going on, everybody? <laughs> Bugaboo. Hey, Leon, we're really out here making websites. Hell yeah, we are. Hadouken11 with the sub. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. Two months, too. Woo. On a streak. On a roll. How's how's the uh, Orasi? Hey, I missed you all, too. We got to talk about that. We got to talk about it. I have missed you all. Uh, we're going to let folks get in here for, for a few seconds, and then we're going to talk about it. Oh, Reset, hey, thank you for the gifted sub. Indifferent Ghost, all right. Thank you for the gifted subs as well. I always appreciate the support. Wow, thank you so much. I saw it a little bit faster than the alert was able to pop up. <laughs> it's real Johnny Cakes with the hydration already. Cheers to you. Thank you. George Codewell with the sub. Thank you so much. I appreciate y'all. Woo. I agree, Four Sharks. Holiday hitting a lot of us hard. I agree. Nage, I just want to let, I just want to say, Leon, I'm in love with the websites that I've made so far. Hell yeah. Let's go. Sheenan, thank you for the cheers, for the bits. That hype train already. Jeez. I, I got an emote? What? This is awesome. Secure Greatness. Aw, oh, y'all y'all popping off. I appreciate y'all. Secure Greatness, thank you for the gifted sub. There's so many things coming in right now. Jesus. Cookie Codes, thank you for the gifted sub. I haven't even been able to say what today's question is. I haven't even been able to get the question out. We're on a level five hype train. And I just showed up. <laughs> Map of the problem. Thank you for the sub. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Oh man, these are coming in fast. David, thank you for the for the bits. Imran, thank you for the three month sub. Manny, thank you for the bits. Jackie, thank you for the two two month sub. And Wolfgang, Wolfgang, Wolf. Thank you for the hydration. Let's go. The energy already. Jeez. Bezos going to be mad. I love it. All right. I'll tell you what. Last week was rough, but today feels good. Today feels good. Yo, Manny, what's up? Today feels real good. We're going to get to some JavaScript today. You know what? I got to clean my glasses real quick. We're going to get the JavaScript today. Jackie, thank you for the sub. We're gonna have some fun. We're gonna do some cool stuff. You're gonna see some code for the first time. For a lot of y'all, this might be your first time really playing with some JavaScript. So today's a good day. Today's a real good day. Grateful for you too, Secure Greatness. I missed y'all too, I appreciate it. All right, let's, let's talk about it. Adil, thank you for the sub, I appreciate it. Hey to you as well. Let's talk about it. So last week was rough. Uh, I've, I've shared before on stream, uh, I'm bipolar. I'm going to have some, 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 some days that are rough. I did really good this year though. On add one. Thank you for the sub. I appreciate you. Thank you. I did really good this year. I was doing that race. I was running. I was running. I saw the finish line. I saw, I saw 2021. I was running. I was almost there. And 2020 was like, nah, time to pay your dues. It caught up. And uh, hit me pretty hard, but uh, thankful for everyone that took a moment to send me a message on Discord. Uh, the kudo board hit at the right moment. Thank you to everyone that put a message on there. Uh, thank you to everyone that sent me an email, a tweet, whatever it was. I appreciate y'all. I really do. That made kind of the the inner turmoil a little bit easier. Hunyan, thank you for the for the two month sub. I appreciate you. 
Uh, it did make it a lot better. Uh, so I appreciate you all. Uh, all the folks that are here, I appreciate you all. Uh, and I've never seen that much support in my life. It was, it was, it was, it was overwhelming. I appreciate every single one of you. Mom, thank you for the sub. I appreciate you. So honestly, like from bottom of my heart, like thank you to everyone that's here. Seriously, like real talk. Like normally when I get into those like places, it's dark, it's scary. And uh, to have that, that much love and that support coming at you makes things a little bit better in the moment and a lot better as you're coming out of it. So I appreciate y'all. Thank you. I really do. Um, so, uh, tonight is a fun night. I'm feeling good. Y'all look like you're feeling good. The question today, if you already answered, I, I still want to see the answer again. Cause I missed it. It was too much. So uh, thank you for the cheers. I appreciate you. Here's the question. I want everybody to answer. Would you rather one Domino's pizza? That's the best thing that you've ever eaten. The best thing you've ever tasted will, and you know you will ever taste. Or one Domino's pizza for the re for, for 10 years each month. So one free pizza, best thing you'll ever taste. Or one free pizza a month for 10 years. Throw your answer in, uh, in chat for me, please. The best 10 years. One pizza. One glorious pizza. <laughs> Okay. One per month. This is a good one. This is a good one. Uh, we have what? Level five hype train. Thank you all. Appreciate y'all. Look at that emote. That's beautiful. Paloma, thank you for the sub. Best 10 years. <laughs> I think, I think I'd go with the one pizza. I don't, oh, that's actually hard though. Because if you know it's going to be the best thing you've ever tasted, like that your life peaked, right? You, like you've peaked in terms of taste. Tuchini, thank you for the sub. I appreciate you. I always think of little Wayne whenever you sub. <laughs> it makes me giggle a little bit. Uh, I appreciate you. Thank you. <laughs> Roos News, jeez. <sighs> thank you for thank you for the ten gifted subs. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Wow. The support today, folks. Whew. We, we're not even not even 10 minutes in. Thank you. I appreciate y'all. Thank you. Everyone that subbed, everyone that, that cheered, uh, everyone that gifted the subs, everyone that spent Jeff Bezos' money. I appreciate y'all. Uh, as always, donations go to the nonprofit I work at during the day, Resilient Coders. Uh, we're doing good, too. Who's my bad, bro? Thank you for the gifted sub. All right, I think we're in here. I think we got everybody. Before we get started, just one more like super thank you to everyone. Uh, I can't I can't tell you like I when I first posted this like idea like to start like teaching on Twitch, I thought I would have like five ten people. <laughs> Seriously, I thought it would be five ten people, and that'd be it. We have a grand old time. Uh, but the fact that there are over 300 people here right now, thousands of you in discord and the community that we're building, the support I see every day, y'all helping each other, lifting each other up, helping each other through dark times. And then to see that wave of support come my way, uh, when I was down and I needed that help, overwhelming, overwhelming, uh, never my wildest dreams. So. Thank you. Every single person that's sitting in this chat. Thank you. I appreciate you. I don't know how to say it any other way, but just thank you. I really do. I appreciate every single one of y'all. With that being said, we got some JavaScript to get into tonight, folks. We got some JavaScript to get into. So I'm going to go ahead and talk through what we're going to learn tonight. Uh, and then we're going to jump right on into it. So I'm going to go ahead and kill the music. And we're going to get into this. Zia, thank you for the cheers. I appreciate you. I love you all too. I really do. I said, like, even right now, even right now, look at all these people coming in here. I appreciate you. All right. So let's take a look. I'm going to go to little Leon here. 
All right. So we got a lot of stuff to cover tonight. Got a lot of stuff to cover tonight. We're going to talk a little bit about some uh, interesting topic that came up yesterday in one of my classes that I wanted, I wanted to talk and discuss with y'all. We're going to talk about like what programming actually is. We're going to build a, a YouTuber background picker. We're going to learn about variables and data types and what all the heck that means. We're going to build a not so great calculator. We're going to play around with some arithmetic and conditionals. We're going to build that angry parent simulator if you've been here before. Uh, and then we're going to touch on building out a temperature converter, which you'll finish for homework. Now, this is a lot. Your goal today to be able to should be to absorb, to be a sponge. Understanding will come later. Today, today you're a sponge, soaking in things, seeing it for the first time, knowing that you're gonna redo it. In fact, the homework here is repetition. You're literally gonna redo all the projects we do together today. So know you're gonna get your repetition in. Know that if this is your first time ever really dealing with JavaScript, it's going to feel weird. It's not going to come easy the first class, maybe not the second class, third class, you're going to start feeling it, right? Just think about, think about how HTML and CSS went. MJ Untitled, thank you for the sub. First time you saw HTML and CSS, right? Second time, Third time, but then the fourth time you saw it, fourth time you saw it, you were like, uh, a little bit, a little bit shallower, all right? And now, I saw what y'all have been up to. I saw those layouts you've been working on. I saw those websites you've been building. After just eight classes, really seven classes, the fact that like you can have a design and get a layout going, you're killing it. You're crushing it. You're doing you. You're beasting it. Did you watch that video? I put the video in Discord. I wanted you to watch it before class. That bell rung and it cut to the HBO logo. That's advertising, but that's y'all. You were getting beat up. You were throwing hands. You were getting in the ring every day. And at the end, you got some good layouts. You're on your way. <laughs> My vomit's still wet, but we're working on it. Hey, that's a good spot to be in. That's a really good spot to be in. So, root beer, I surprised myself. Hey, I think a lot of folks feel that way. They surprise themselves. Push yourself. Dig it. Dig deep. You're going to get through it. Crazy Risky, thank you for the sub. I appreciate it. Let's get it. Let's go. All right. You said... You're, you're eight days, eight classes ago. Most of y'all didn't know what HTML and CSS really was. But now you're all out here building websites, building layouts. Congratulate yourself. No matter how much progress you feel you've gotten done, I want you to congratulate yourself. I want everyone right now, I don't care if you're at Panera Bread watching this, I want you to, I want you to say out loud, I did a good job. I want every single person, every single one of you, yes, you, I want you to, I want you to say, I did a good job and, and use your name. Say it again, say it again, but use your name. Leon, you did a good job. All right. <laughs> I did a good job. It could have been the chunkiest vomit you've ever produced, but guess what? Five weeks ago, you weren't even producing chunky vomit. You were dry. You weren't even dry heaving five weeks ago. Right? You did that thing. You did a good job. Jersey Boss Babe, thank you for the gifted sub. If you produced vomit, you did a good thing. <laughs> I always feel bad for folks that like joined for the first time. They're like, what the heck is he talking about with all this vomit stuff? Right? You did a good job. You did a good thing. 
you got to celebrate the small things. When you're learning to code, when you're learning to become a software engineer, you're going to get beat up over and over and over again. And you have to celebrate the good stuff. I saw your layouts. You did a good job. All right. So let's get some questions going. Before we jump all the way into class, I want to make some room for questions. If anybody has some questions, go ahead and throw them in chat. Happy to answer any questions. If there's not too many, we'll, uh, we'll jump right into it. Hey, Leon, I spent four hours per day coding and learning things, but couldn't do all the layouts. What I've learned a lot from being stuck hours and hours is I know a lot more than before. So thanks to that. I feel like I could have done more. It makes me kind of upset. How should I feel about that? You're always going to feel that way. I've never produced one thing in terms of coding where I was like, this is perfect. I've never really been, I've, I've never in my 10 plus years coding been like, this is perfect. It can never be done better. Like for like a larger project, right? You're always going to feel like there's room for improvement. You're always going to feel like there's things that can be changed, modified. That comes with the territory. Comes with the territory. You got to be comfortable with your progress and where you're at and starting to realize what's good enough, right? And as we start progressing, you'll come to realize what's good enough. But for right now, you should be at the point where if you're producing, you're doing good enough. If you're, if you're putting yourself out there and vomiting, you're doing good enough. If you're getting some layouts going, you're doing good enough. You're going to have your entire career to perfect things, to get things better. And as you have more time, push yourself. You can all make your layouts better. You all did good work, but every single person in this chat can make their layouts better. My layouts that I do, I can make better. So as you have the time, push yourself. Push yourself. Knox, thank you for the hydration. Cheers to you. <laughs> every time I laugh, booty liquor, thank you for the cheers, the bits. I appreciate you. Whoa. Cheering shares the emotes with poke with folks. That's pretty cool. So 25 people now have the emoticon, the emote. That's pretty dope. Wire code is a coding boot camp necessary. No, you can learn pretty much all of this stuff for free all online. There are tons of phenomenal resources to learn all this stuff. The thing I always say about coding boot camps is that if you paid a lot of money, you might show up and they kind of come with built in support, like built in people that are paid to help you. But you can find both of those things online for completely free. Heck, if you go to exclamation point discord, you'll find one of the best communities on the Internet that want to help you learn how to code a community of folks, a community of peers that are all working to helping you learn how to code. So you got both of those for free. Everything we ever do here on this channel will always be free, never behind a paywall. So you don't need it. Come on here. Join the crew. Exclamation point discord. All right. So if you're new, exclamation point ask is not live. I see people throwing it in there, but exclamation point slides is that'll give you the slides for today. If you do exclamation point slides, that'll give you the slides for today. And if you do exclamation point discord, that'll bring you to our discord community. Uh, that discord community, once you agree to the rules, there'll be a follow along materials channel where you'll be able to download all the starter code that we're going to be using today. And you're going to want that starter code. There's a lot of code that you're going to want to look at, play with. And so join discord, exclamation point discord, agree to the rules and download those materials. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and start getting into this today, folks. Let's let's get in here. Let's put our JavaScript hats on. Let's get ready. We're feeling good. We're looking good. Let's learn some JavaScript. All right. One quick pause before we <laughs> jump into the JavaScript. Last night I was running a boot camp for some alumni of the resilient coders boot camp that I work at during the day. <laughs> and one of our experts in residence Vons, 
Uh, they were a former educator. Then they joined Resilient Coders. They went through our, our boot camp. Then they joined Wayfair, and then they worked at Salesforce as an engineer, and then they came back to RC Resilient Coders to be an expert in residence. And last night we were talking about why JavaScript and coding in general is so hard to learn, and they related it to martial arts. They've done martial arts for a very long time, and the person that trained them always said that like learning martial arts was really about two key things. Half of it was hard work and the other half was believing you could do it. And so I really took that to heart like this. I was thinking about that last night. I was like, that that's, that's actually like, that's, that's what it is. Like when I think about folks that are learning how to code, when I think of all my students that have learned how to code, it really is half hard work and then the other half is just getting through all of the demons that are in their head, telling them that they're never going to pick it up, that they're not going to learn it, that they're going to fail, that they're not smart enough, that they don't have the aptitude to do this, right? It's half putting in an immense amount of hard work. And the other half is just like fighting that imposter syndrome, which we're going to talk about next class, fighting all those little doubts, right? Fighting all those little doubts. That's where people get stuck. People don't get stuck because JavaScript is hard. They get stuck because they don't believe that they will ever figure it out. They're three classes in going, oh my God, I'll never get this. I'll never be able to understand this. And then they quit. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people get three classes deep and then quit. If you were learning Japanese for the first time and you were three classes in, you wouldn't be quitting going, oh, I'm not fluent in Japanese yet. This ain't for me. If you were three classes into JavaScript, you wouldn't be going, oh, this isn't for me. And so they said that it was kind of like a baby learning to walk is kind of like the ethos that you need to learn how to code. And I thought that this is just something silly that they were talking about that I thought was really cool. So I wanted to bring it up. They, they're In their mind, Learning to code was like a baby learning to walk. Babies are really good at learning to walk. It takes them a while. They get up, they fall down. They get up again, they fall down. They get up, they fall down. <laughs> they maybe can get it, walk to the couch, fall down, they get back up. And they do it over and over and over again. And eventually they start walking. Here's not what's happening, most likely in a baby's head. Oh my God, all the adults can walk. I can't walk. I'll never be able to walk. Uh, that one time I spit out my food, that's an indicator that I'll never walk. Uh, I, I, um, I failed my pee eating test yesterday in terms of like, like actual peas, not like pee. That was weird. Uh, like my carrots test, I couldn't eat my carrots right. And so uh, since I couldn't eat my carrots, that means I'm never going to walk. They're not standing in the corner like this, like looking at all the other other adults walking around like you see this shit. You see Bob walking around the house like I'll never be able to do that. Right. No. They get back up. They fall. They get back up. They fall. They get back up. So what you want to embody the energy that we need as we're going through learning JavaScript is to realize that you're going to put in a lot of hard work. And at the end of it, you need to realize that you actually can do it. And for a lot of you, that realization that you actually can do it is going to be the hardest thing. So I'm going to tell you, you can do it. I've had students from all walks of life get there. The only thing that stops them is their frustration. So you have to decide. I hope you decide tonight. I hope you decide like right now, I'm going to get through it. I'm eventually going to learn to walk. I hope you baby up and realize that, yeah, I'm going to fall down. I'm going to fall down a hell of a lot, but I'm not going to let that weird voice inside my head that says I can't do it win. I'm going to get through it. I'm going to learn fucking JavaScript because you can do it. You can learn JavaScript. 
So let's learn some motherfucking JavaScript tonight. Let's go. All right. Now, if we're if we're learning some JavaScript, we got to make sure, right? We got to make sure that we know where we're going to put it. All right? Golden rule, separation of concerns. Our content goes in HTML. Our style goes in CSS. And finally, our behavior and interaction goes in our JavaScript. Now, why? Why does content go in our HTML, style only go in our CSS, and JavaScript only go in our, in, <laughs> behavior and interaction only go in our JavaScript files? Organization, look at the chat go. Yes, for organization, for yourself and for your team, separation concerns is all about keeping yourself organized. If you put your content in your HTML, your style in your CSS, your behavior and interaction in your JavaScript, when you come back and look at your code, it's gonna be easier to know where to go. And when other folks on your team are looking where to go make changes, they're gonna know where to go. Nasty, thank you for the hydration. Cheers to you. Hmm. Ah, there we go. All right. Two kind of quick reminders about HTML and CSS, just getting our spaced repetition in. Remember, IDs in HTML, each element can only have one ID. Rezo, thank you for the sub. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Two more streak. All right. I see you. IDs, one element per HTML can have that ID. That ID cannot be reused anywhere else. And each element can only have one ID. That's our unique identifier. We're going to start using that with JavaScript today a lot. Like being able to target one element and only one element with our JavaScript is going to be really important. Now, we also still have classes to think about. Classes can be applied to any HTML element. Each element can have as many classes as you really want. And you can have an element that has both an ID and classes. Remember, classes are a great way of applying styles to multiple elements at one time. All right. All right. Whew. We've made it. Let's talk about some programming. Let's talk about some fingers on keyboard, some clackety clack. <laughs> Bob, I miss Bob. <laughs> Bob's over there chilling. Maybe Bob will come back later. Joster, thank you for the hydration. Cheers to you. <laughs> this is you. This is this, Maya. This is literally you. This is this is everyone working on their layouts yesterday, trying to trying to get them in before they're going to be due. Getting those layouts done. This is this is this is live live footage of yesterday. Live footage from yesterday. Secretly recorded footage from yesterday. Ah, we'll, we'll leave it at that. All right. Here's, here's the, the, the golden rule when we start approaching programming. A computer will do what you tell it to do. A computer will do what you tell it to do. All right. So with that in mind, a program is simply a set of instructions that you write to tell a computer what to do. It's just a set of instructions. If you're talking about writing a program, you're talking about writing a set of instructions that a computer can understand, right? That a computer is being told what to do. So a program is just a set of instructions. Think instructions, instructions, instructions. A program is a set of instructions you write to tell a computer what to do. And then therefore the act of programming is just writing those instructions. But the key thing here is in a language that the computer can understand. Okay, so far we've seen HTML and CSS. Those are what we call markup languages. They weren't really true programming languages. And the language that we're gonna learn today and for the bulk of the program is JavaScript. Now JavaScript isn't a language that a computer really kind of actually understands. Chop, thank you for the sub, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Two months in a row, y'all out here with the two months, three months in a row. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. JavaScript is not something that a computer can really understand. Okay. JavaScript is going to be broken down further and further into something that the computer can eventually understand. 
But JavaScript is a great language for us as humans to talk through and think through our instructions that we eventually want to hand off to the computer, right? The instructions that we want our computer to follow, right? So the act of programming that we're going to start today is writing JavaScript. And that JavaScript is eventually going to be broken down into something the computer can understand. But the reason we write JavaScript is so that it's easy for us to know what's going on in these sets of instructions that we're writing for our computer. Magic Marcos, thank you for the sub. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Right? Exactly, Hadouken. We call JavaScript high level. It's a high level language. It's something that humans can understand and humans can read, but it's not low level, meaning something that a computer like natively understands. It has to be broken down from high level to low level. Okay. All right. So give me, give me some creative freedom here. Freedom to, to give an educational model that's not 100% exactly what's happening in a computer, but is a learning tool. Give me some freedom here, okay? I wanna talk about that difference between high level and low level, but first we have to kind of understand how a computer could actually maybe start to work or what a computer really is, okay? Let's start with a very simple circuit. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a battery. Let's pretend we have a battery here and I have a wire that connects from one terminal of the battery, the other, and back up to the light bulb, right? Now, this circuit is complete. There's electricity flowing, and the light bulb is on. It is now glowing, okay? This circuit is complete, it's glowing, and we have completed a very simple circuit. Now, let's modify this just a little bit. Let me go ahead and create a battery. I'm gonna open the one side. It's gonna have a nice wire connected on the one side. And then I'm gonna have another wire on the other side. But this time, I have an open switch. So right now, this circuit is not complete. The light bulb is not on, right? We could say that this, this circuit is, we can represent it by saying it's off. Right, this, this is off. It's not, the light bulb's not on, it's off. This circuit is not complete, okay? But if I close that switch, the circuit completes and the light bulb comes on, all right? <laughs> Speedwagon said the nuns are happy with this. I hope they are, all right? So we have two different ways to represent this circuit. We have one way where it's off, and one way where it's on. So we can start to think about how we're gonna represent this circuit, right? Let's say that if it's off or open, we're gonna represent the circuit with a zero. And if the circuit is closed and the light bulb is on, we're gonna represent it with a one. Now, some of y'all that, that have read ahead might know that we're getting close to something called binary, exactly. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna represent these zeros and ones just to represent on and off values, okay? So now we have a way of talking about whether a circuit is on or off or closed or open, right? So just zeros and ones. Now, the cool thing is once we agree to this idea of on and off or zeros and ones, we can actually start to build up to some very, very base logic, like some very simple logic. And then from this very simple logic, we can piece all these different pieces of logic together and get a language that a computer can actually understand. And then we add layers and layers on top of this that represents that base logic, but then makes it more and more human readable and if we go all the way up that chain, we wind up with JavaScript, okay? But for right now, we know that we're representing an, an open circuit with zero and a closed circuit with one, or an off circuit with zero and an on circuit with one, okay? Let's go ahead and add two switches here. I'm gonna go ahead and do my battery again. 
and my battery on this side. All right. How could I represent this circuit, chat? How could I represent this circuit? How could I represent this circuit? Yeah, zero, zero, right? We could say that this circuit is zero, zero, right? That they are both open. This circuit is not complete. How could I represent that circuit? Yeah, zero, one, one, zero, depending on how we set it up. Right, but one zero and one one. How could I represent this circuit? Yeah, one one, nice. So we could represent this circuit as one one. And something really interesting here is that one one represents a very basic, simple form of logic, right? a very simple form of logic. We're basically saying this magic word, that. With one one, what very basic form of logic have we just represented? Can I take a guess? Yeah, blah, blah, law, got it, and with one one, we're saying this this and that are both closed, right? They are both closed. We're saying and, both the circuits are closed, right? This and that one are both closed, right? So from this very simple understanding, like just representing like open and closed circuits, we can build up to some very simple logic. Right now we're representing and, with these double ones. Gabby C, thank you for the sub, I appreciate you. Thank you so much, right? From this very simple logic, we can build up to something called a logic gate. And these logic gates kind of form the basics of how we're gonna put a computer together, right? And so from this very simple logic, we can start forming more and more complex circuits, getting more and more complex logic. And as we start getting more and more complex logic, we're gonna add some other things into this computer pie. We're gonna add an arithmetic logic unit, something that can do calculation. We're gonna maybe add some memory. We're gonna add a program counter. So if we, if we take this base logic and we add a few other things that we need, we can get to a computer and that computer can eventually read instructions and do the things that we want it to do. Oris, thank you for the, uh, Oris T, thank you for, oh, oh, reset, thank you for the hydration, cheers to you. And my Texas toast, thank you for the three-month sub, I appreciate you, right? So this idea here is that we can start building out a computer once we have this basic logic, okay? If you're jazzed about this, or if this thing kind of interests you, uh, there's a phenomenal book uh, by Charles Pretzold called Code, The Hidden Language. And it starts all the way, it explains computing, but starts all the way with like um, how ships would communicate with flags and build up complex language by just using different flags. Then with light and Morse code, and then from light and Morse code builds up to simple logic, from simple logic builds up to basic computers, and from basic computers up into the things that we're gonna learn throughout this course, right? And so the cool thing here is that Subtoast, hey, I appreciate you. Thank you for the sub, right? The idea here is that if you can just understand that we're building up to more and more complex things, that's how a computer works. We're gonna, we're gonna represent some on and off values. We're gonna eventually build up to some simple logic. From simple logic, we can build more advanced logic. And from that more advanced logic, we can eventually get to a computer that can understand instructions and do things that as humans, we might not be able to do. So I'll put that in Discord um, when I follow up with the solutions from today. But great book, phenomenal book. You can find it online. Uh, Charles Pretzold, Code, The Hidden Language. Talks all about this stuff. So if you're really interested and want to nerd out about like these little details here, definitely recommend that book. Uh, it was one of my favorites. All right. All right, so your homework. 
your homework was to watch Independence Day. Has anyone seen a better movie than Independence Day? You haven't. It's a phenomenal movie. <laughs> People are like, no. Oh, shit, I forgot to watch it. If you forgot to watch Independence Day, the rest the rest of this class is just going to be a wash. It, 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 I'm sorry. You, you, I told you multiple times. The rest of this class is going to be all Independence Day. I'm joking. I'm joking. We're going to make one really important point with Independence Day, and then we'll move on. But you should still watch Independence Day. Great movie. There's only one of them. Don't get confused. There's some other like jokesters that say there's like Independence Day 2 or something like that. It's bullshit. Don't believe them. It's not true. All right. So Independence Day is a true story in that it could really happen or may have already happened. How you depend with time. Right. Um, and so we're going to talk through how Independence Day could have been a true story. So. For those uh, out of the loop that didn't do their homework, aliens invade. There are a bunch of these smaller alien ships all around the globe over big cities and one gigantic alien mothership. Now, once all these aliens come and their ships get close to the to the to the world, we had an alien spaceship in Area 51. In Area 51, from the Roswell crash, we actually had an alien spaceship. When all of these spaceships come to Earth to attack, what happened to that spaceship that was in Area 51, chat? What happened to that spaceship that was in Area 51? Yeah, go for Mitch, Sergio. It activated. It turned on, right? So these other spaceships came. It turned on. So that tells us something pretty interesting. That their like communication and power systems are intertwined, right? Because as they got closer, somehow they started sharing power with that spaceship. And it came on and activated. So that's really interesting. It seems as though if we could maybe impact one ship it might impact all the ships because of how like their power and systems and all that work so the first thing we try to do is like nuke the big ship over the u.s and uh nothing happens why did the nuke not impact the ship that was over the u.s <laughs> 5g <laughs> yes cuban it had a force field Right, it had a force field, and so our new kid it, and nothing happened. It had a force field. So, what did Jeff Goldblum do to save the world? How did Jeff Goldblum save the world? We couldn't attack them. We were nuking them, and nothing was happened. How did he save the world? <laughs> Teamwork. <laughs> we make fun. Hacker man hacked virus. Yeah, Jeff Goldblum wrote a computer virus that Will Smith and him then flew to an alien mothership and infected their computer with. And then once the computer was infected, once, once their mothership was infected with the virus, since we know that their like, power and communication systems are intertwined, the shields actually dropped on all all the other ships that were in the area because that's what the virus is intending to do is intending to like mess with their power and shield system and once it got to the mothership it spread to all the other ones and their shields went down we nuked them we destroyed the aliens america right now how in the world did jeff goldblum write a computer virus that could infect an alien mothership because I don't think they were writing their code in JavaScript. Maybe. Maybe in the light years away, they're still writing JavaScript. But uh, how, how, could he, how could he write a computer program that would take down Alien Mothership's shields? Yeah, this idea of binary. We can assume, ah, period, yes, that's something, uh, something interesting there. We can assume that there are probably some universal constants in our universe. Uh, we assume that maybe math and physics probably are some universal constants. 
and things like on and off. So we can assume even if this alien civilization is light years away, they probably still have this idea of on and off. Right. And if they have on and off, it makes sense that their computing systems might be built up around it. They would build up simple circuits from those simple circuits. They would get simple logic from simple logic. They would build up to higher level logic. And then from high, from that higher level programming languages, all the way up to the alien programming language that is powering their ships or coding their ships. So what Jeff Goldblum was able to do is something called reverse engineering. He reverse engineered that code all the way down to binary, those zeros and ones. Diego said in all caps, it was just a movie, Leon. Everything is acting. <laughs> so Jeff Goldblum, no, this is real. This is real life. Jeff Goldblum, Jeff Goldblum reverse engineered that code all the way down to binary zeros and ones and then built it all the way back up. Now, is this doable? Absolutely. It makes for a great movie. Now, the speed at which he did this, that's where a little little plausibility comes in here, right? But the idea is sound, like we could probably do this. If their system of programming was still at the end of the day represented as on and off values, binary, the simple logic building up over time, then we could reverse engineer, right? Build up a program that could be infected in the mothership, bring down the shields, nuke them, and save the world, America. Now we have a saying around these parts of this historic day. Uh, and it is a saying as old as this lecture is. If you know what this saying is, that is a sacred saying in this chat that describes this historic occasion. Can you put it into the chat for me, please? <laughs> Dominoes. <laughs> yes, we like to refer to this event as binary upload. Boom. So how did Jeff Goldblum save the world? Binary upload boom. All right. So with binary upload boom, affected the alien motherships. We nuked them. We saved the day, America. Now, reverse engineering is like a real thing. And you can be an expert in reverse engineering. Uh, there is a, a YouTuber I really like, uh, Scanlime. They do this. They take random things that their viewers send them and they break down the code that's in them, reverse engineer it to get them to do weird stuff, right? One of my favorite talks of all time that I'll put in Discord with the uh, solutions for today uh, is a talk about reverse engineering Tamagotchis. So they were able to reverse engineer Tamagotchis all the way down and then build them back up to do what they wanted them to do, make them do fun and weird stuff, right? So this is a real skill, this is a real thing. But at the end of the day, it really comes down to this idea that computers, right, will do what you tell them to do. A program is just a set of instructions that a computer will follow. And programming is the act of writing those instructions. Now, back in the day, we had very, very primitive computers that were closer to what we call machine code, closer to something that a computer could understand just by itself. We were representing on and off values to build up base logic. From that base logic, we could build up more complex logic. But nowadays, we have higher level languages like JavaScript that enable us as developers to communicate our ideas, to communicate our instructions. But those instructions can then still be broken down, understand by a computer, and do the things that we want it to do. Whew. I feel like um, <laughs> Alyssa says, wait, why don't people know Tamagotchis? Is this an age thing or a location thing? Uh, Tamagotchis are, I have one, because after I watched that talk, I bought way too many of them. Uh, so I'll find one during a break. Um, a Tamagotchi is a small virtual pet. They look like eggs most of the time. And there's like a little digital character in them that just like moves around. You have to like feed it, play with it, and they eventually always die. Uh, and so they're, they were like a huge craze, at least in the US for like a year or two. Uh, everyone would bring the uh, dragon. I thank you for the hydration. Cheers to you. Thank you. Uh, I remember like 
I would I was walking into school. And I, I had like the, I got to move my mic for this real quick. I had like the Tamagotchi in my backpack. So I'd be walking down the hallway like this. Doing one of those so that the Tamagotchi would snap around and everyone could see that I had the new one, the Nano, the baby Nano to be exact, right? And I had, I had the flex. So I was throwing those shoulders around. Uh, and then I remember the other one I got, which was uh, an all black one. It was Salem. The cat it was a giga pet Salem, the cat from Sabrina. And I walk into school and I did one of those. Mm. See that got the baby nano. I got the Salem giga pet. I didn't even play with Tamagotchis. They were beneath me. <laughs> it's sabotage. Thank you for the gifted sub. <laughs> Uh, and I have the Pikachu one. Uh, I have the Pikachu one. Like, I still have... One second. Hold on. One second. We'll be right back. One second. One second. Hold on. Hold on. Be right back. I'll have to find it during the break. Uh, Angie put more stuff in my closet, so I don't know where it's at with the closet kind of being a little bit disorganized at the moment. Uh, but I do have an original Pokemon Pikachu virtual pet, and I will show it to you uh, after we take a break. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so these things existed. There's a wonderful talk where they reverse engineer them, um, and I'll put it on. Uh, I'll put it on stream once I find it. Bad time for dominoes to arrive. All right. So at the end of the day, binary upload. Boom. True story. It's how computers work. Now, JavaScript. Chris, your girls are getting super obsessed with Pokemon. You have no idea about it. Hold on. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's flex. Let's flex. Come out, come at me. What's up? See that? What's up? How you doing? What's up? Mm. Clip it. Clip it, chat. Clip it. There we go. What's up? Uh, yes. Uh, so this is my flex. Uh, <laughs> The um, my wife and I do our finances every week, uh, and this week we had to talk about my Pokemon, my Pokemon holdings, my holdings and Pokemon cards, because uh, the prices right now of Pokemon cards uh, are are wilding. These prices are going through the roof. I've never seen prices this high before, uh, and so I'm going through all my Pokemon cards and like looking up the prices. And doing Pikachu faces at these cards that I thought were just like throw, like some of these are just like throwaway cards. And some of them are like 40, 50 bucks a card. And I'm just like, what the heck is going on? Um, so uh, it's wild out there, folks. Take care of yourselves. But yeah, Pokemon's back in a big way. And the prices are just skyrocketing. <laughs> yeah, it's Jeff Bezos out here buying all the, all the first edition base hollows. All right, <laughs> let's get into some JavaScript. All right, so JavaScript is a language that we use to communicate our ideas, to communicate those instructions that we're going to use, <laughs> to communicate those instructions that we're going to pass on to the computer, to tell the computer what to do. All right. Now, JavaScript has a specific syntax, just like HTML and CSS had a specific syntax. JavaScript has a specific syntax, right? 
It has the spelling and the grammar rules, punctuation, the things that we have to do to write JavaScript in the correct way. The, 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 the way that we write it, the special characters, the, how we do it, we call that syntax. So one of the first things that you have to learn when you first start writing JavaScript is the syntax and how to do it appropriately. Now, one of the interesting things about JavaScript syntax is that there's a lot of like characters that you might not be familiar with, right? And so since there is a lot of these characters you might not be familiar with, I just want to take a second or two to talk through what those characters are. Okay, so let's go ahead. And I'm just going to open up an inspector here. And I'm just going to bring up my console and I'm just going to type them out real quick uh, just so that we all know what these characters are. And that way when I'm saying them, you know uh, what I'm talking about. So there are some things that you're going to be familiar with already. Uh, so let's, let's go through. So we have square brackets, uh, which we'll use a lot in JavaScript, particularly when we get to things called arrays, right? So we have square brackets. We have curly braces. Also, some people call these figure brackets. I call them curly braces, right? We have less than and greater than. So it, no longer like in HTML are they an element that denotes like a specific tag. We don't really have that. Uh, these are for determining logic. So less than or greater than, right? We have commas, of course. We have dots, of course. Uh, and then we have some other interesting ones. We have our colon. We have our we have our uh, semi. Whoop. We have our semicolons and our colons. So this is a colon. This is a semicolon. Then we have our forward slash our question mark, and our question mark is often called a ternary selector. I know it's wild, don't worry about that right now. Uh, so we have question mark, we have double quotes, single quotes, we have a backslash, pipe character, and when you have two pipe characters, that's actually or. So in, in JavaScript, we would say double pipe character is or. We have hyphen for subtraction. We have parentheses, open and close parentheses. Uh, and for some reason, I picked up this habit a long time ago of calling parentheses parens. So if you ever hear me talking about parens, I really just mean parentheses. I don't know where it came from. I've tried to break the habit. So if you hear me say parens, I mean parentheses. Asterisk for multiplication. Ampersand, two of them represent and. So double pipe character is or, double ampersand is and. Percent sign, we call that modulus, right? We call it modulus, it's how we get a remainder, right? It's, it's how we get a remainder. So it doesn't actually mean percent in JavaScript, it's how we get a remainder. Uh, don't worry about that for now, we'll come back to that a little bit later. We have it's not called like a dollar sign, we call it bling in programming. So you're gonna see blings in JavaScript. We have our octothorps that still come up and we have exclamation points that we call bangs. So you'll often hear me like say like bang discord or bang slides. It's because I'm so used to calling exclamation points bangs. So that's what the heck I mean whenever I say bang slides, bang discord. Uh, it's, it's, we just call them bangs in programming. Plus sign for addition, equal sign uh, for comparison and assignment, which we'll get to later. We have the tilde, and then we have our ticks, our back ticks. Um, one thing that we didn't talk about real quick is that the slash, that forward slash is how we do division. All right. So these are all kind of just some odd characters that you might not be familiar with that are gonna pop up. It looks like regex, yeah, <laughs> it does, my text is toast. Uh, so these are things that are gonna pop up. I just wanted to, to bring them up now to see them for the first time. Uh, but as we move through JavaScript, I'll make sure to cover them again, that you're just gonna notice that there are some very specific things to JavaScript syntax. They're gonna come up over and over again. Our semicolons, our brackets, our parentheses, our quotation marks, uh, and all these other unique characters are gonna keep coming up. All right, 
Let's take a look at the YouTube background picker and then we're gonna take a break. Uh, we'll take our break. So we're at the top of the hour uh, for, for class time. So let's look at the YouTube background picker and then we're gonna take a break. Now, before we actually take a look at this code, uh, if you need the code, exclamation point or bang discord in chat, right? That bang discord in chat will uh, take you to our discord community agree to the rules. Once you agree to the rules, that'll give you access to the follow along materials channel and you'll be able to get all the starter code in that channel. All right. <laughs> Discord is in my type. Now, I'm about to show you some JavaScript. It's not my expectation that you laser focus and get everything that I'm showing you. I literally just wanna show you something cool. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to show you something cool right now. I don't expect you to get it. I don't expect you to understand what's happening. I just wanna show you something neat, all right? And so a lot of the examples I'm gonna show you today, I don't really need you to get it in the moment. I don't need you to hyper-focus and understand the exact syntax and be like, Leon, I got it locked. I'm ready to take on alien motherships. No, I don't need that energy right now. I'll ask for that in a couple of weeks. Right now, I want you to kind of relax, be like, oh, that's neat. That's cool, Leon. How'd you do that? That's neat. That's the energy I need, right? Right. I want you to. I want you just to to look at it, to absorb it. Maybe ask a few questions, but I don't need you like frantically copying down code. Um, I'll share all the solutions as always. I'm going to ask you to try a few things yourself, but today is not the day where things are going to click and make sense. That's not today. That's a couple weeks from now. Today's about kind of trying, seeing, playing, getting comfortable with that syntax, maybe vomiting a little bit, you know, that's what we're looking for. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and, okay, we trust you. Thank you. I appreciate you. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up the YouTube background picker. Let's take a look at it. Uh, so if you go to the YouTube background picker or just background picker, there's an HTML file. Uh, but now with the code that I've shared, there are also JavaScript files. Watch out. All right. And so if we go ahead and we open this in the browser, everything's already connected. And uh, here's what it does. So if you're a YouTuber, you got to have a dope background, right? You got to have those lights going in the background, right? Uh, if I put down my green screen, I got lights going behind me. I can change the, the mood of the lights. Uh, and so maybe I want to test out how this new chair is going to look with my dope new background. So here we go. I can do a nice like pink background. It right, looks pretty cool. Green on green. Oh, now we're talking blue on green. Oh, that's 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 the that's the wave right there. That blue on green. So this is made for all the YouTubers out there that want to that want to pick their background color, they can use our, our app. Uh, so that's what this does. I'm just clicking. So click, click, and click. So when we talk about separation of concerns, we talked about, <laughs> diabolical, one job please. <laughs> Leon clicked, one job please. Uh, we talked about this idea of behavior and interaction. This is like the first time we're seeing that behavior and interaction. I'm literally, interacting with this site by clicking and what handles the behavior and interaction chat what handles the behavior and interaction sorry peanut sorry about your eyes yes let the wave of javascript flow over us it's all javascript always has been right is this all javascript that behavior and interaction it's javascript all right so let's go ahead and take a look at some of this code. The things that we're actually clicking on are these LIs in the code, right? These LIs are the thing that we're actually clicking on. And it's important to note that the first LI has the idea of purple. The second LI has the idea of green. And the third has the idea of blue, right? And that's just so that we know what we're clicking on. We're going to be able to target those ideas with our JavaScript and then listen for things that are happening to them. Like, are they being clicked on? Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at this JavaScript. Remember, 
This is the first time you're seeing real live JavaScript. It's not going to make 100% sense. Let's enjoy it. Let's just revel in the moment together. We're spinning around in the daisy field, right? Get lost with me. All right, let's get, let's get lost together. So here we go. I have three Smurfs. What? How'd that happen? All right, here we go. I have three Smurfs. These are my Smurfs up here. Okay. These are my Smurfs. What I am doing is I am looking into the browser. Remember, the browser renders our HTML and renders our CSS. That's just a fancy way of saying that it like opens the HTML file and opens the CSS file. So when I go to this page, right here I have rendered my I have rendered my HTML. I have rendered my CSS. What we're looking at is the rendering of the HTML and CSS. Okay? This render is not the actual files. The browser reads the HTML, reads the CSS, and then paints a picture. What we're seeing right now is that painted picture, right? Think about a painter. A painter has a beautiful model and they paint that beautiful model. Right, they paint that beautiful model. Now, is their painting an exact replica <laughs> of their model? No, it can't be. One is a picture on a piece of paper and the model is a living, breathing human being. You would never say that that picture of that beautiful model was the actual model. That picture, let me draw it again. Boom, hair neck, arms, torso, legs, belt, right? That beautiful picture is not my beautiful model, right? <laughs> not safe for work. It's not the model. It, it's the painting. It's the rendering of the beautiful model, right? It's the <laughs> Y'all wild and you got to knock that off. It's a PG stream, folks. You guys subscribe to my OnlyFans to get that type of content. You like this content here? There's more of it on the OnlyFans. That's all I'm going to say. All right. So the painter is not creating a one-to-one -one replica of the model. It's, it's a rendering of the model, right? If the painter, if the painter goes ahead and puts a clown nose on the picture, Right? If the painter goes ahead and puts a clown nose on the picture, the model doesn't in real life get like poof, clown nose. Like the, the painter, when the painter puts a clown nose on the picture, the model doesn't like magically have like a red nose that's like on their face now. My finger went up my nose a little bit there. That was an accident. Right? Like it, it, it's, 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 it's a rendering, it's a picture. What we do to this picture doesn't actually happen in real life, right? Doesn't actually happen in real life. The same thing is happening in this browser. The browser is reading your HTML file. It's reading your CSS file and painting what you see here, okay? We refer to this as the DOM or the document object model. That's the fancy word for this. But the rendering is just kind of like the painting. Like if we gave an artist our HTML file and the CSS file, the artist would then go ahead and paint what we see here. And so that's what we're seeing. If we go ahead and we look, we click inspect, we can see that, let me make this a little bit smaller. We can see the painting. We can see the rendering of the HTML. This right here is not the actual HTML. This is not the actual HTML. This is the rendering of it. Remember, the very first thing I showed you was that H1. 
That H1 was big, bold, black, and beautiful, much like myself. But remember, it got its boldness, its, it, its, 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 its size from the browser. Like the browser was the thing that was messing with it, that was making it bigger, right? We didn't write any CSS. We didn't write any CSS. The browser injected its own CSS on its behalf. So it's kind of like the artistic license of the browser. It's like a painter being able to do whatever they want with their painting. So what we are looking at right now is not an exact copy of the HTML and CSS. It is the rendering of the HTML and CSS. If I make a delicious bowl of, like if I make a delicious pot of soup, right? I followed a recipe. I followed a recipe that said, all right, let me go ahead and create my recipe. Water, salt, tofu. This is, oh my God, that's so bad. This is my grandma's traditional tofu soup. It's delicious, right? This is the recipe for grandma's traditional tofu soup, right? Now, I've made a huge pot of grandma's traditional tofu soup. And some jerk comes along and throws a rubber duck into the soup. Right? Some jerk just threw a rubber duck into the soup. Does the recipe magically update to include rubber duck? Like does the like since we put an extra thing into the bowl of soup, into that pot of soup, did the recipe like magically change? No, that doesn't happen, right? We would say that big pot of soup is the rendering of the recipe. That big pot of soup is the rendering of the recipe. We read all the instructions and we built the soup. But if somebody comes along Right. If somebody comes along and throws something extra into the soup, it's not Harry Potter. Like the recipe doesn't automatically update. Right. The same thing is happening in our browser. Same things happening in our browser. The browser has read our HTML file. It has read our CSS file and it has painted this lovely picture that you see. But there's a jerk that's going to come along. There's a jerk that's going to come along and mess with this lovely painting that the browser has rendered. Chat, who is this jerk that's going to come along and mess with our lovely render that we have here? <laughs> Internet Explorer. <laughs> JavaScript, exactly. JavaScript is going to come along and be like, I'm about to fuck your shit up. Boom, 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 right? JavaScript just came along and messed everything up. Now, the beautiful thing is my actual files, my actual HTML, my actual CSS, they weren't affected. Just like when I threw the rubber duck in the soup, my recipe didn't update. Just because I'm interacting with this painting that we see here in the browser, my HTML and CSS didn't get affected, right? So when I refresh, all the changes that happened in the browser disappear, right? All of the things that happened in the browser disappear, right? As soon as I refresh. Because when I refresh, we throw out that whole pot of soup. We just yeet it, that whole pot of soup across the room, right? We yeet it, that whole pot of soup across the room, and then we have to reread the recipe. All right, water, salt, tofu, and we rebuild a new pot of soup. So JavaScript has the ability to mess with this lovely rendering. We call this rendering the DOM. But as soon as we refresh, it all goes back to normal. Okay. So what we're going to see 
is that JavaScript is going to do a few things for us. Okay, JavaScript is going to do a few things for us. JavaScript is going to enable us to start messing with this rendering, messing with this DOM, right? And here's the code that's going to enable us to do it. With this code, we are going to be able to start messing with that render, making it do the things we want it to do. But as soon as we refresh, as soon as we refresh, it all goes away. All right. So let's keep that in mind. Uh, let's put five minutes on the clock here. Let's put five minutes on the clock here. We're going to take a break, a well-deserved break. When we come back, we're going to start talking through this code and seeing what it actually does. So we're going to put five minutes on the clock. Go ahead and take a nice, well-deserved break. Uh, if you're interested in things we've been talking about, if you're interested in, in Dom, Jerks, you're interested in all those like fancy renderings, uh, my OnlyFans is only a million channel points. You can get all those things uh, at your leisure. Just use the, uh, the channel points. All right, so five minutes on the clock. Tone, thank you for the hydration. Let's bring up the tunes. Kaleem, hey, thank you. I appreciate you. All right, folks. Take a break. Get up. Do what you got to do. Hydrate. Please, you, yes. Still sitting in your chair. Get up. Go stretch. I'm going to go find Pikachu. I'll be right back. Right back. I'm going to go find Pikachu. Found it. All right. Found it. If you haven't gotten up and taken a break, please go take a break. So here, let me turn it on. Is a Gen 2 Pokemon Pikachu. I don't know how to get it to focus so you can see it. Um, <laughs> Pokemon, thank you for the hydration. Cheers to you. Oh, yeah, let's do Big Leon. Good call. So, this is the Gen 2. I don't know how to not make it green screen. So I, so he, he died and uh, I think I have to like shake him to wake him up again. 
Uh, let me shake it real quick and see what happens. So this one has a pedometer in it. And so the more, the more you shake it, oh, like you see he's pissed at me. Maybe if I go far back, you can see it. He like has his back to me, he's pissed, right? These ones don't die, but the more it shakes, the more watts you get. And then you can use those watts. Um, you can use those watts to like play games and like to give give them to, to Pikachu as a gift. And so it's like a fancy pedometer, right? Uh, and he does more and more creative stuff the more watts you give him. And uh, so cool kid Leon had this on his belt all the time. Uh, yeah, so go for Mitch. The, this is Gen 2. I have a Gen 1. The Gen 1 is somewhere in my boxes. I don't know where the Gen 1 is because I've been playing with this one actually. But the Gen 1 was all uh, all yellow. Yeah, all yellow. Yeah. And so that was the Gen, the Gen 2. This is the Gen 2. Gen 1 was all yellow. I have both. I don't know where the Gen 1 one is though. And then... The other thing that I found, come on back folks, you're just in time for Pokemon story time. Come on back folks. The other thing that I found, which is even more important, is the mega memory card that contains a flash copy of my Gen 1 Mew. There is a Gen 1 Mew on this flash cartridge. Yeah, eat your heart out, folks. This is the real deal. It's all green. I don't know how to not green screen it out without messing everything up. But uh, yeah, this, this flash card has an authentic Gen 1 Mew from the 1999 Pokemon World Tour uh, that is on this cart. I have the certificate of authenticity and one second one second be right back <laughs> Not only do I have the certificate of authenticity I have the provenance to prove that I was there I have the two gym badges I earned that day. And you can see that they are from the Nintendo training tour in 1999. That's right, folks. Provenance, original on Pokemon Blue cartridge and secured on a flash drive with the original Mew certificate of authenticity. I don't think there's too many of those left, folks. I don't think there's too many of those left. <laughs> Lano said, can we get a pic of young Leon playing Pokemon? I do have pictures of me at the Pokemon Center in New York playing Pokemon. Uh, so maybe one day we'll make it a community goal. <laughs> I'm just really excited about Pokemon these days. So I, I know it's been a little bit of a flex, but uh, hey, I was there from the beginning. All right, let's go ahead and get back into it, folks. What's it worth? I, I've i tried to get a trade value on it, um, but I have not been able to find one that has actually exchanged hands anytime recently. And so I don't know the actual value on it. I know that it will be a pretty whopping trade for somebody else that collects Pokemon. Um, but I don't know if anybody is a real Pokemon collector and knows the value on a Gen 1 Mew with, with actual provenance, photos of me being there, other merch, and secured to a, to a flash drive, let me know. Uh, update on merch and holiday schedule. <laughs> Flux, thank you for the bits. There you go. Thanks for the Pokemon throwback. Oh, thank you for being here. Uh, so merch, I've pushed to Tuesday. So Minecraft and merch will drop on Tuesday uh, just because I need a little bit more time after the week I've had. So on Tuesday, they'll come out. 
holiday schedule I'm going to share as soon as we're done stream. There's one last thing I have to confirm. And then with the examples that I share, I'll also post the, the holiday schedule. So that'll come out tonight with the sharing of the solutions and stuff like that. So yeah, merch, Minecraft drops Tuesday, holiday schedule, we're gonna, I'm gonna post it uh, when we're done class. And yes, I will give solutions to the layout homework, but it's gonna probably be like another week just so that folks that are still trying to catch up a little bit can. Yeah, I'm also way behind on Discord DMs right now. If you DM me on Discord, I apologize. It's gonna be a minute before I get to you just because I had so many people reached out to say, how you doing, to send me some love. And so I'm gonna get to every single person. It's just gonna take me a, a day or two. <laughs> Uh, so if you send me something through DM, give me a day. Uh, if it's something important, put it in Ask Leon. I'll get to those first. Um, but yeah, I'll get to all the DMs. Give me like a day or two. Ooh. Triopia with 2004 with the stretch. Thank you. You know how this goes. Not that kind of channel. Oh, yeah. All right, there we go. And a drink? Wait, wait, who did I miss for the drink? Oh, Ninja with the drink. Thank you so much. Cheers to you. There we go. <laughs> One day somebody's gonna hit the million points. I'm gonna have to actually start <laughs> posting more content. Notice I sell more content to OnlyFans, not said start, I said more content. You're missing out, folks. All right, YouTube background picker. What we're seeing right here is a rendering of the HTML and CSS, right? A rendering of the HTML and CSS. JavaScript is gonna come along and mess with it, but our actual files are safe. When we make something pink, it doesn't like edit our CSS file, right? Nothing actually changes in our actual files. It's all happening here in the browser. And then once we refresh, all those changes go away, all right? All those changes go away. So let's start looking at some JavaScript just to see some of the cool things that it can do. So here we're saying, go ahead and look at that rendering. Remember we call, it the, we call that rendering the document. So go ahead and look at that rendering. Inside that rendering, oops, sorry, thank you. I'm still in big Leon, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank y'all. So here is the JavaScript. And if we start reading this, what we're saying is, hey, document, what that means is go ahead and look at that rendering. Go ahead and look at what we see inside the browser here. That's the document, right? That's the document, what we see here in the browser. So go to that document and inside it, you're gonna find something that has the ID of purple. All right, so go ahead and inside that document, find something that has the idea of purple. So let's go ahead and look, let's inspect. And if we inspect, we're gonna see that this LI has the idea of purple. So that's the thing that we're targeting, right? That thing that has the ID of purple, that's the thing we're targeting. And what we're saying is on click, run these sets of instructions, all right? So on click of the thing that has the idea of purple, run these sets of instructions. So here's the set of instructions for party purple. It says, go ahead and look in the document, find the body and change its background color to this color. Then find the document again, find the body and change its color to white. Sorry, find the font color and change it to white. Okay. So all we're saying here is, hey, when somebody clicks on something that has the idea of purple, run those sets of instructions. 
And this sets of instructions just makes something have a background color and a font color. The way I like to think about this is we call all three of these event listeners, right? They're all listening for an event. And so we kind of set all these things up and then they kind of just sit and wait, right? They kind of just sit and wait. So I've always thought about them as Smurfs. Smurfs are like the little blue people that was a cartoon a while back. So I like to imagine when I run this line of code here, find something that has the idea of purple and I have this event listener on click. What I really imagine that I'm doing is I'm coming here to the DOM and I am putting a little blue Smurf on that LI. What's a Smurf? Hold on. These are Smurfs. These are like little cartoon characters, uh, but they're like, they're like tiny and they live in mushrooms. So what I like to imagine is whenever I have an event listener, <laughs> whenever I have an event listener, I put a little tiny Smurf on it. And that Smurf is just sitting there on the block by himself all day. And what that Smurf is doing is just waiting. That Smurf is chilling. And it's waiting, it's waiting, and then the Smurf slowly sees, it sees out of the corner of its eye. Look, it sees, it sees, it sees the mouse out of the corner of the eye. The Smurf sees it, it's coming, it's coming. The Smurf sees the click, it sees the click happen, and that Smurf goes, Ayo! Right, it, it, it yells out. It says, hey. We need these purple instructions like ASAP. Somebody just clicked. Somebody just clicked. We need these purple instructions. The Smurf was standing on the block by himself watching. Watching this event happen. He was sitting there listening to this event, waiting for this event to happen. And as soon as he heard the event or saw the event, yelled out, hey, we need the purple instructions. He <laughs> snitched. <laughs> the Smurf is snitching. <laughs> and so the Smurf saw the click. And it said, all right, we need party purple. It said, we need those instructions to run, those party purple instructions to run. And so then that's what happened. These two instructions ran. We targeted the body and we made the background color purple. And then we targeted the body again and made the font color white. And so that's why we see like this purplish pink background and uh, this white font color because the Smurf heard the event. It saw the event going down, right? It saw the event going down and it yelled out, hey, we need those party purple instructions. And then it happened. <laughs> and then it happened. And what we actually did, what you didn't realize though, what you didn't realize, let's refresh and everything goes away. What you didn't realize is that we set up three Smurfs right here. We set up three Smurfs. <laughs> They're all part of a different gang. <laughs> we got the purple gang, we got the green gang, we got the blue gang. I, I didn't, I wasn't going down this path, folks, but <laughs> this is where we're at. It's, it's Smurf warfare. Uh, <laughs> this is where we're at, I can't believe it. Uh, so what we do is we actually set up three Smurfs, all right? We set up, <laughs> We set, we, set up, we set up three Smurfs. We got a purple Smurf that's listening for a click. We got a green Smurf that's listening for a click. And we got a blue Smurf that's listening for a click. And so they're chilling. Got a Smurf here, Smurf here, and a Smurf here. They're chilling, right? <laughs> they're chilling. This Smurf is listening for a click. And when it sees the click, it goes, hey, we need those. We need that party blue instructions to run. Then this Smurf sees the click and is like, yo, no, no, no. We need those green party instructions to run. And this one's like, nah, it's about purple. It's about that purple life. We need those purple party instructions to run. So what we did, 
when we set up our code here is we set up three Smurfs, but we don't call them Smurfs. We call them event listeners. With these three lines, we set up three things that are now listening for events. They're listening for clicks on these specific elements that have the idea of purple, the idea of green, the idea of blue. And they're going to sit there listening all day long. Right? Smurfs is a better name. <laughs> they're going to sit there listening all day long. And when they hear a click, when they hear a click, they run these sets of instructions. They run the streets and they run these sets of instructions. All right? So there's a lot of syntax here. There is a lot of things that are happening here. But for right now, don't get caught up on the, the, the dots and the parentheses and the query select and what all that heck that means. Just start to understand some of these basic concepts. Debacle, thank you for the hydration. Cheers to you. Right? Start paying attention to like the larger themes. We have this idea here of looking at the document, right? We have an ability to look for specific elements in a document. We have the ability to put event listeners that are gonna sit there and listen for things that happen to that element. And then once it hears it, it can run sets of instructions. So here is a set of instructions. Falk 15, hey, I appreciate you. Thank you for the sub. Two months in a row. Spending that Bezos money, I appreciate you. Thank you. All right, so. Yes, Luck Monkey, exactly. JS can change your HTML and CSS within the DOM, within the browser, right? but it doesn't affect these files, right? Like, let me, let me show you. When I click on green, nothing's changed in my HTML. There's nothing that's changed here. I look at the CSS, nothing's changed here. But what did happen is that this rendering has changed the green. Web dev DJM, if you do exclamation point semicolon, <laughs> you can read an article about what happened to semicolons. With JavaScript uh, and the newer version of JavaScript that we're on, they are no longer 100% necessary. So fantastic article. You can do bang semicolon and read all about it. Cool. Now, as we start to progress, we're going to start to realize there are names for this stuff, right? There are names for this. These sets of instructions, we're going to start to call functions. And functions are going to have their own bit of syntax, right? We're eventually going to learn a lot of these little things. <laughs> Reptar bro, hey, appreciate you. Thank you for the sub. Sending my Smurfs to the Bezos. Hey, all right. Love it, right? Eventually, we're going to start to know their like, terminology for all these things, but we're not there yet. We're going to get into flow. What I'm going to ask you to do for part of your homework, for your homework, what I want you to do is to add another Smurf and make something happen. So that's going to be part of your homework. Part of your homework, I want you to add another Smurf. Right? Add another Smurf which means you're also gonna need another LI, right? And you're gonna do some copying and pasting. I don't really like to tell folks to copy and paste when they're writing code. I think you should always type it out. But for this one, go ahead and copy and paste the LI. Knock yourself out there. Copy and paste that LI, change it from blue to something else, and you're done. For your JavaScript though, I'm gonna ask you to type it out. So you're gonna go ahead and do another function. Function, you're gonna type it out. For your event listener, you're gonna type it out, All right? You're gonna type it out. Get used to typing everything out. Don't copy and paste. You get, you get one copy and paste. That's the only thing you ever get, you get one. So I'm letting you say, all right, you can copy this one LI and then you can never copy another thing in your life while you're learning, 
right? So you're going to want to type all these things out. Get used to typing out these things. Get used to typing the the dots and the parentheses and the curly braces. And you're going to notice that for a lot of you, you might not actually ever really use these keys. And so your speed in terms of typing is going to take a hit for a little while. But that's why you want to type everything out. You want to get comfortable with it. The more you do it, the easier it will come. All right. <laughs> I'm going to save that copy and paste and use it later. All right. Totally, totally your prerogative. Absolutely. Go ahead. <laughs> you only get one, though. And then after that, no more copying and pasting. All right. A lot going on here. Don't worry too much about it all clicking right now. I just wanted to show you that with JavaScript, we can do a lot of really cool stuff. All right. We can start manipulating the things that we see. We can start listening for behaviors, right? We can start modifying colors and shapes and all that stuff based on behavior and interaction. But before we get there, we got to learn the basics, right? Before we can get to doing all that fun stuff, we got to learn the basics, okay? Now, in JavaScript, there are what I like to call the big four. The big four are variables, conditionals, functions, and loops, right? Variables, conditionals, functions, and loops. We're gonna work through all four of those. And with those four, you can pretty much build whatever you want. Like with just those four things, you can get pretty dang close to whatever you want. There are a lot of other like built-in features to JavaScript that we're gonna use, but those four things are the keys. If you can learn these four things, you can start to understand how you're gonna write the instructions that our computer can eventually understand, okay? So don't get hung up too much on syntax. Let's get hung up on these like four key ideas. The first one we're gonna talk about is variables. Variables tell your program to remember a value to be used later on, okay? All a variable is, is a bucket. <laughs> Counting flashbacks. All a variable is a bucket. You're going to take your bucket and you're going to put a value into it. And then that value can be retrieved later on. All right. All a variable is a bucket. You put a value in, chilling, and eventually you can take that value out of the bucket and use it. Okay, so all variables do is they enable our program to remember a value to be used later on, and that entity that we use to store the value is called a variable. So, we're talking about the basics of a computer. One of the things that are, that's gonna be important for a computer is memory. Like a place to store stuff, a place to remember things, right? So let's pretend we have some memory. Here is our memory, right? Here's our memory. When it comes to variables, there are two steps. There's declaration and there is assignment. Okay, declaration is creating a space in memory. If we look right here, we have let and then age. Let is like the magic keyword that lets JavaScript know that we're creating a space in memory. It's a keyword. It lets JavaScript know that we're creating a space in memory. So as soon as JavaScript saw let, it created this space in memory for age. And so that's why we have this lovely space in memory called age over here on the left. On the next line, I did my assignment. I put the value of 25 into this space in memory, right? 
So we have two steps, declaration and assignment. Declaration is just like creating that bucket, creating that space and memory that we can put a value into, right? And then assignment is actually putting that value into the bucket. You don't have to do these on separate lines. You can actually do it all at one time. So here I have declared a space in memory called age and I have assigned it the value of 25 all on one line. So where might this be useful? Let's imagine uh, we are Facebook, right? Facebook, if you have a profile on Facebook, Facebook keeps, a, keeps, a, keeps track of a few things. It might keep track of your age, your location, your last sexual partner. Uh, it might keep track of your friends. It might keep track of your, th your thoughts. <laughs> you didn't know that, did you? Oh, so interesting. So uh, I was, there was, there was, I forget where I listened to this. But uh, there was a talk where somebody said that Facebook is really good at figuring out who you're sleeping with because they know that there are two phones at a location overnight. It was the social dilemma. Yeah, it's probably social dilemma. There are two phones that are at a given location overnight that aren't normally at that location overnight. Uh, one, right? Like they, they, then they could figure out, all right, well, this person is with this person overnight. So there's a good chance that they know who you're, you're sleeping with, right? They don't even need to know anything more. They could just make a, a good prediction based on that data alone. <laughs> Kobe is not rocket surgery, right? Uh, so let's, let's imagine all the things Facebook is keeping track of. Right, Facebook is keeping track of age. Maybe they're keeping track of location. So they could go ahead and create a variable called let location equal, and let's say Boston. There we go. So this is doing declaration. We've created a space in memory called location. And we've done assignment at the same time. So stored in that space in memory is now the word Boston, right? So we were able to declare a variable called location, creating that space in memory and we were able to store in it the value of Boston. All right? So we have this idea of creating variables and there's two steps. Declaration where you create that space in memory and assignment where you put that value into memory. Now the cool thing is later on Facebook can say Bob is age, right? Facebook can say that now. So they can say Bob is age. And instead of it saying age, it will say 25. And they could say Bob is in location. And instead of it saying location, it'll say Boston, right? Because what it's doing is it's accessing these values that have been stored into memory, right? So when we create these variables, they're just buckets that are holding a value. And then we can use that value later on, right? We can create a, a space of memory called age and then retrieve that when we need it. We can create... <laughs> We can create a space of memory called location and store Boston in it and then retrieve it when we need it.
right? So these variables are just enabling us to store stuff into memory that we can use later on. So here, let me go ahead and create a new space in memory. That space in memory is going to be called num of apples. And I am going to assign that space in memory the number nine. I've done my declaration and my assignment on one line. Now, when you're creating your variables, it's important that you have some sort of consistency on how you're setting up the names. This right here is called camel case, meaning that the first word is lowercase and every other word is capitalized. Okay. I use camel case and you're going to see me use camel case across my IDs in HTML. You're going to see camel case across my classes and ID names in my CSS. And you're going to see my camel case in all of my variable and function names here in JavaScript. Don't worry. We don't know what those are yet. All right. It's important no matter what you choose that you're just consistent. When you're working in teams later on, you want to be able to go to the folks on your team, the folks that are in your house and say, hey, all my variables are camel case. And everyone's going to know how to write your variables throughout your entire programs. When you join a team, they're probably going to use camel case, but they might do something else. They might do hyphens. They might do underscores, right? They might do some other weird type of casing. The idea here is that there's not really one that's better than the other. It's just being consistent with the one you choose. I like camel case. It's the cleanest and easiest for me to remember. So that's what I use. I encourage you to do the same. All right. So now we have these data buckets. What can we actually store in these buckets? Well, we can store all different kinds of data. That's right, folks. Not all data is the same. Some data we've already seen so far are numbers, like our age was a number. And another piece of data type that we've seen was strings. So those are the first two we're going to focus on, numbers and strings. They're both data. They're just of different types. One is a number, like you know a conventional number, and one is a piece of text, okay? So these are the first two that we're going to learn about. So strings are just pieces of text. And strings are always going to be surrounded by quotes. In JavaScript, you can create strings or pieces of text that are surrounded in double quotes, single quotes, and then ticks. But we'll learn about that in a little bit. Right? So it's up to you whether you do double quotes or single quotes. Once again, it's kind of a personal decision, a team decision. The only thing that you have to be careful of when you're writing pieces of text is that whatever quotes you use on the outside, you cannot use on the inside, right? Without escaping them. So here I have a single quote on the outside and a single quote on the, out on the outside that works. And then I'm using double quotes on the inside. So that works here. I have double quotes on the outside and a single quote on the inside. So that works. But if I was to do something different, let me go ahead and open up my inspect tool. Let me go to my console. Let me make this a little bit bigger. If I was to do, let's say, double quotes, they purchase it, right? We're going to see that there's a little bit of an error here. There's a little bit of an error here. Since I use double quotes on the inside, my string is actually ending here. It doesn't know what that is. And then I have another string that starts here, right? So you have to be careful. You can't use the same quotes on the inside as you use on the outside. Right now, does anybody in chat know what purchased is going to be? what JavaScript is going to try and read purchased as 
Anybody know what this might be try to be read as? Chat. Yeah, baby. A couple other folks here. It's going to be a variable. It's going to try and find a variable called purchased. But right now, we don't have a variable called purchased in memory. So we're going to get this uncaught syntax error. It can't find it, right? It's something weird It's happening. Like we, we messed up uh, because these strings terminated here. This string closed that one, and this one closes that one, but we had some stuff that was stuck in between. So be careful. Whatever quotes you use on the outside, you can't use on the inside unless you escape them. So I can show you a, a trick here. If we go ahead, go to the console, I can go ahead and I can do a lovely backslash, backslash, and now it has been escaped. And there we go. Now I get my double quotes on the outside and my double quotes around purchased because I have escaped the quotes. So that lovely backslash can escape your quotes. And so these are just words, right? These are just the words that make up the syntax of JavaScript. You're gonna have to start feeling comfortable with words like variables, declaration, assignment, numbers, strings, right? All right. Now, in our strings, we can do interesting stuff. Since we know that that backslash, or I don't know how that's going to look for y'all. Since we know that backslash can go before characters and escape them, mean, that means that like JavaScript won't read them, we can start to do funny stuff. If you do backslash n inside of your string, it'll be a character turn. Like it'll break to a new line. If you do backslash t, it'll be a tab that like indents. These like weird things inside your strings are pretty dangerous though. And I put a little warning down here. Why, why do you think I might've put a warning there? Why do you think I might've put a warning there? Yeah, that's that's kind of style, like breaking stuff to new lines, entering tabs. That seems like it might be getting too close to, to style for me. And so you have to be careful. Is that violating separation of concerns? It's something you have to ask yourself, right? So even though we're writing JavaScript and JavaScript can manipulate stuff, right? We still have to keep these rules of separation of concern into mind. All right. Another type of thing that we can put in our variables. Remember, the only thing we're talking about right here is just what can we put into memory? Like, what can we remember, right? What can go inside of our variables? Like, what can be stored inside of our variables? And so far, we saw pieces of text, but we call them strings. And the next thing we're going to see are numbers. So we can store numbers in our variables in JavaScript. And there are some things we have to remember about the numbers in JavaScript. There are two different kinds of numbers you're gonna run into a lot. Integer values, which are like our whole numbers, and floated values, which are just numbers with a decimal place, right? We have whole numbers, which we call integers, and numbers with decimal places that we call floats. Our numbers in JavaScript can be positive and negative, meaning that they can be signed and we can do arithmetic with our numbers. The way that we do addition in JavaScript is with a plus sign. The way we do subtraction in JavaScript was with a hyphen. The way we do multiplication is with an asterisk. And the way that we do division is with a lovely forward slash. Now this last one might be something you haven't seen before and it's called modulus. It's how we get a remainder, right? It's how we get a remainder. It's how we get a remainder, right? So if we did 10 mod six chat, what is the remainder that we would get? 
What's the remainder that we would get, chat, if we did 10 mod 6? Yeah, 4. Because 6 goes in the 10 one time, and then we have 4 left over. So if I was to open up my inspector, I go to my console, and I do 10 mod 6, you can see that it gives me 4 back. It gives me whatever's left over. 6 go, went into 10 one time, and there's 4 left over. Now, this happens every single time I teach <laughs> JavaScript. People's eyes start to glaze over at this point. And that little voice inside your head that says, Leon, I sucked at math. This is really kind of upsetting me right now. That's what, this is where this is where that starts to happen, right? There's a little bit of math that we're going to have to be comfortable with when it comes to JavaScript. We're not going to use it a lot, but the basics here, right? The basics, right? Don't let this scare you. This 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 isn't the hard like this like this. I know seems like it, it's triggering all that like fear response that you would have when you saw math in school. I promise you this math is just simple. We're just going to do simple math for this entire course. Simple math, right? So don't let those emotions overwhelm your ability to pay attention right now. The only thing we've talked about so far, and the only thing that matters out of the last half an hour that I spoke, the only thing that matters, right, in the last half an hour, right, are variables. Variables are something in JavaScript that enables us to remember a value so we can use it later on. That's all it is. When we're creating that, that value to store something, that's called declaration. When we put a value into that bucket, we call that assignment. And so far we talked about two things that can go into those buckets. We know that pieces of text or strings can go into those buckets and numbers can go into those buckets. Oh, I had a posture check. Mac Tay, thank you for the posture check. Let me get here real quick, one second. There we go. All right. Now, modulus is actually pretty fun, and you're going to use it a lot. Uh, there's one thing that uh, that modulus is really helpful for. Anybody know what we can use modulus for quite often? Something that's like uh, something that's that's uh, pretty helpful to use modulus for. Yeah, Reptar, remember, nice. Remainders is what we use modulus for, uh, and we can use those remainders to figure out things like even and odd, right? How can I figure out even and odd with modulus? Let's go and take a look. So if I have a, a number, chat, give me a number, please. Somebody give me a number in chat. 23. All right. So there's 23. I can do modulus 2 and figure out whether it's even or odd. Right? So I did 23 mod 2 and I got 1 back. That means that there is a remainder of 1. And since there was a remainder of one, I knew that it was odd. Let's see if I do 24 instead. Two goes into 24 12 times, right? And since I get zero back, I know that it's even. So I can use this modulus very quickly to figure out whether a number is even or odd, right? So that's something that we're gonna see modulus be useful for down the line. All right. It's 2.04, we took a break a little bit late. Uh, let's go ahead and take a break. Let's take a five minute break. I know this stuff is, is, is heavy on the head. So let's go ahead and take a break. Let's put uh, five minutes on the clock here. Let's go ahead and put five minutes on the clock. Give your brain a break. Get up, stretch, hydrate. Gonna put on some music. A perfect day. Thank you for the hydration. Cheers to you. Get up. 
move, stretch, hydrate. <laughs> we started math and the viewer count dropped. Always, always happens. I'm in shock. I can't move. I missed two. Po I, I got the one posture check. Did I miss another one? Don't see the other one. I'll do another. I saw Mac Tay's posture check, but I'll do another one just in case. Thank you. Code AW, I'm not clearing the console. It's just that I'm closing it each time and then opening it. So I think that's just the default. Tony Diamond, at some point, will you be able to walk us through the photo grid on the salon layout? Absolutely. Uh, I'm gonna do, a, I think like a, a non-normal stream day where I'm just gonna go through all the layouts and do them live. Alyssa, I was also a mathlete. We are kindred spirits. Does your grandma really make tofu soup? No, I wish though. The day I told my grandmother, I was the, I, when I was nine, I said I wasn't eating meat or pork anymore. Well, I wasn't eating meat anymore. And she's like, great, now you learn how to cook. Alrighty, folks, got two minutes. 43 seconds left. Get up, do what you gotta do, hydrate, move around, get to moving. Anybody have any fun questions? How long have you not eaten meat? I haven't had red meat or pork since I was nine. I've been like fully vegan for like three plus years now. What's your favorite flower? Mm, I, I, I really like tulips for some reason. I, I always thought, thought they're pretty, like different colors. Yeah. I don't know if they're my favorite flower, but I think they're my favorite flower to like get my wife and like to put in the house. Favorite book, easy. Uh, my favorite book is Goblet of Fire, Harry Potter, Goblet of Fire. Favorite movie, uh, number one is Birdman. Number two is Independence Day. Favorite superhero, uh, I like Nightcrawler. What's your favorite flower, as in like baking flower? Uh, I'm gonna go with like King Arthur, regular what like white flower i like for a while we were doing gluten-free and like i was messing with like all the almond flowers and stuff like that but i'm going to go back to my usual where is the first place you will travel when things go back to normal probably somewhere in south america we've been wanting to go to like peru for a while How did you and your wife meet? We met in college. We both met at Yale. We're in the same year together. Thoughts on the Nate Robinson, Jake Paul fight? That wasn't a fight. <laughs> that was one person trying to hug somebody and somebody else getting like knocked out. <laughs> I thought that like, all right, I don't get all right, so it would have been one thing if, if Robinson had said like, you know what, I, I like, I'm just gonna go into the ring and do my thing. But that's not what he said. He said, I've been doing two a days, six days a week, getting ready for this. And then my mans came out in the ring and tried to hug somebody. So I'm like, all right, sus. Like, I, I, I don't think you were doing two a days every day six days a week for a year 
Maybe, maybe somebody told you it was going to be an MMA fight and you went for the... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pork. Maybe you went for the takedown. Uh, but I think he got in that ring. He's like, oh, snap. So we're boxing and got knocked the fuck out. Now, what was more interesting to me was the Tyson fight. Because I felt like Tyson was holding back. Right? My other man's was gassed first round. He did not prepare for that fight. Right? Gassed first round. That it was Tyson could have cleaned them up. But Tyson didn't go for headshots. Didn't go for headshots. Was working the body, working the body, working the body. Very rarely went for the head. And you could just tell he was holding on to some power. Right? To me, it, it seemed like it was planned. That they knew going into it was going to be a draw. And it just seemed like Tyson wasn't willing to like unload on him. Right? I was also surprised about Jones. I thought, because he had been in the ring not too long ago. I thought like he would have came with a little bit more. But like it was kind of similar to the last fight anyway. But um, yeah, I really feel like Tyson has some more energy in him. I feel like I feel like he's he's building up the Legends League. And like the next fight's going to be like a real fight. Like I, I just feel like that's what that's what he's building up to. Like I feel like he's gonna he's gonna something happened maybe and they didn't go all out, but I think he has it in him. So I'm excited. I'd watch the next one. Yeah. All right, let's get back into it, folks. Yeah, bull. I yeah. I didn't I didn't really like look up all the the things they agreed to pre prior to the fight. That makes a lot of sense. All right, let's get into this, folks. Let me kill the music here. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at some more code. Remember, tonight, folks, we're sponges tonight. Everything's not going to click and make sense tonight. I'm not asking for that to happen. I want you to be shown things, ask questions, question why it does what it does, and start to play with it. And then your homework's going to be to come back and play with all these things, right? And and start to toss tussle with them. No one in this chat, if you've never written JavaScript before, should walk away from this class being like, "All right, got it, one hundred percent done. So JavaScript's a done deal. One job, please." Like that's not going to happen today. You want to start seeing things, questioning things, getting ideas, seeing what JavaScript can and can't do, right? <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, let's take a look at the not so great calculator. I'm going to close these ones that we have here. I don't know what I changed, so I'm not going to save it. And I'm going to go ahead and open up my simple calculator. I'm going to open up my index.html and my JavaScript file. So let's go ahead and open this HTML file in the browser. And we got a not so great calculator here. I click on plus three, it adds three. I click on plus nine, it adds nine. I click on minus two, it minuses two. All right. We're gonna be doing JavaScript for a long while. We got a couple of weeks of JavaScript in us before we move on to Node. All right. I'm not scared, but more intrigued. I like it. That's the energy right there. Not scared, but intrigued. I like that. All right. So we can click these buttons. So, so far, if we have four buttons that we're clicking on, what do we know we have four of, chat? Like, I can click on all four of these things. So, what do I have four of, chat? If I can click on each of those boxes, what do I have four of? Ooh, yes. I have four lovely Smurfs or four event listeners, right? We know we have four event listeners that we're listening for. Because those Smurfs are listening for the clicks and then doing something when they hear the clicks. Let's take a look at the look, let's take a look at the HTML. We have an LI with the ID of pumpkin, an LI with Domino's Pizza. Shout out Domino's. What's up? How you doing? Uh, we have an LI with the ID of zebra, and we have an LI with the ID of can't think of anything. Right. So I have these four LIs that all have unique IDs. And then the first thing you're going to see in my JavaScript is that we have four event listeners that have been set up. 
Now, this syntax is a little different, but the same thing is happening here, right? We have, we're looking in the DOM, the dominoes maybe, no, the DOM. We're looking in the DOM, <laughs> looking in the DOM. We're finding something that has the idea of pumpkin and then we are adding a Smurf to it. And this Smurf is listening for a click, right? This Smurf is listening for a click and when pumpkin Smurf hears the click, it runs the or tells the make zero instructions to run. That's all it's doing. There's a Smurf listening for a click. And when it hears that click, it makes the make zero set of instructions run. And there's four of them. There's a Smurf sitting on something that has the idea of pumpkin, a Smurf sitting on something that has the idea of Domino's pizza, hashtag sponsor me, uh, a Smurf sitting on the element that has the idea of zebra and one that has sitting on the ID of can't think of anything, right? So we got four Smurfs and each of these Smurfs is listening for a click. And when they hear a click, they're going to run different sets of instructions. Okay. Now, the reason why this syntax is a little bit different and why we might use it is because there are more different types of events other than just <laughs> chat's wild. Uh, when there are more events than just click, there is mouse enter, there is mouse leave, there is double click. There are all these different events that our Smurfs or our event listeners can listen for, okay? And the cool thing about this syntax is that if you want to listen for something different, like mouse enter, you can change it. So instead of it being click on pumpkin, we can do mouse enter. The on click can only handle click, but add event listener can be anything. So let me go ahead and save it. Let me refresh. I'm going to click on plus three. Gonna here, here, ready? You can hear it. Click on plus three. But ready? So you heard that click, right? I'm gonna click on plus three again. You hear the click? All right, you heard the click. Now look what happens. I'm not gonna click. I'm just gonna mouse enter. It went back to zero. No click. All right? Hold on. Plus nine. Plus nine. Plus nine. Plus three. Minus two. Not ready. No click. I'm just gonna have my mouse is just gonna enter. Boom. Back to zero. All right. So here is the idea that we're talking about. There are different kinds of events that our Smurfs or our event listeners can listen for. I'm going to show it again just so you can see it. <laughs> Y'all are fishing for this bingo and I ain't giving it to you. You've been saying it all damn night. I saw you in chat all damn night trying to get me to say that one word. I see y'all. You ain't going to get me tonight. I know y'all playing bingo. Bang bingo in chat. Uh, if you want to follow along and play bingo, but y'all, y'all been, you've been baiting me this whole night and I've, I'm on to you. I'm hip. It took me nine classes, but I'm here now. You ain't getting me. I ain't going to get got. All right. Back to what we're doing. Minus two plus nine. Oh shit. I rolled into it. Plus three plus nine. You hear the click minus two. You hear the click, right? But watch. I'm going to just roll in, no clicks, back to zero. That's a mouse enter event. So the cool thing is, the cool thing is, all right, I see y'all, I got you. Pickle automagically. I did it on my own terms, all right? I did it on my own terms. You didn't get me, I did it on my own. Everyone's like, bingo, bingo, bingo. 
<laughs> you laugh out loud. He got got. Did it on my own terms. All right. So the cool thing about these ad event listeners is that they don't have to just be clicked. They can be anything that you want. So let's put it back to click. So what's happening here is we have our Smurfs, our event listeners listening for clicks and then following these sets of instructions. Now, the <laughs> the cool thing about this not so great calculator is that it's keeping a total. Like when I click plus nine, minus two, it's like keeping a running total, right? It's keeping a running total. And so what's the only thing that we've learned about so far chat that can store a value in memory that we can reuse to add numbers to, subtract numbers from, do whatever we want to? Exactly. It's a variable, right? It's a variable. So a variable is the thing that we have that we can add a number to, subtract a number from, right? Set it back to zero. And that's what's happening in this program. In this program, we have a variable of total. And that variable is set at first to the number zero. When I click on plus three, when I click on plus three, what I'm actually doing is I am clicking on the element that has the idea of Domino's Pizza. The Smurf is hearing the click and telling the Jumanji set of instructions to run. All right, it's telling the Jumanji set of instructions to run. The Jumanji set of instructions, what they do is they do total equals total plus three. So the very first time I click, the very first time, let's refresh, the very first time, I'm gonna refresh my page here, the very first time I click on plus three, total was at what value? Before I clicked on plus three, what was total at, chat? Before I click on plus three, what was total at? Exactly, Ev, I see you. It was at zero. As soon as I click plus three, it looks instant. It looks like it happened like that, but that's not what happened. When I clicked plus three, I clicked on the element that had the idea of Domino's Pizza, right? I clicked on the element that had the idea of Domino's Pizza. I had a Smurf set up to hear that click on Domino's Pizza. When that Smurf heard that click on Domino's Pizza, it ran the Jumanji set of instructions. And then the very first thing I see in that Jumanji set of instructions is set total, which is currently zero, to be equal to zero plus three. So I do zero plus three, and I'm using my big brain 300 IQ right here. Zero plus three is three. And so now total has been reassigned to be three. I went from zero to zero plus three, which is three. So total is now equal to three. And then the last thing I do is I go into my document. I find the thing that has the ID of place to put result. And I put text inside of it equal to total. And right now, total is three. So three goes inside of place to put result. Like if I look at place to put result, it's right here. This span is ID to place put result. So I've gone ahead and put three into that span because that was what total was equal to. That variable of total was holding the number three. Booty liquor, thank you for the hydration. Cheers to you. A lovely... Zero calorie Gatorade this evening. Uh, secure greatness, total plus equal three also works too. Uh, so the thing they're talking about is 
Uh, this would also work. There are many ways to do this. We could have done total equals total plus three. We could also have done total plus equals three. They're both just ways of adding three to total. And so the idea here is, <laughs> The idea here is that we have this variable called total and we can add numbers to total, subtract numbers for total, reset total back to zero. And that's what this not so great calculator is doing, right? Once again, don't get caught up on this syntax here. Your, your goal is to be a sponge, to see things. There are gonna be, as Diabacal said, there's so many different ways to do things. Right, so many different ways of doing things. Don't get hung up on that right now. The thing right here is understanding that there's this variable called total. At first, it's set equal to zero. We can add three to it. We can add nine to it. We can subtract two from it, or we can hard code it back to zero. Right, we can hard code it back to zero. Right, so if we go and back and look at our, our calculator now, now I know a little bit more of what's going on. You know, all right, let me refresh, start over. If I click on plus nine, what I'm actually doing is adding nine to total, so total goes from zero to nine. If I click on this minus two, I'm subtracting two from total. So total, total goes from nine to seven. If I click on plus three, it goes from seven to 10. And if I click on up here, this zero, it gets hard coded back to zero, right? So the idea here is that we're starting to see these like little things that we can do at JavaScript. We can listen for events. We can run sets of instructions. We can add and manipulate variables. We can put stuff back into the DOM using this lovely inner text. Okay. So your goal for this bit of homework is to redo this, but add one more thing. So add another either subtraction or addition. So you should add like another, like maybe like minus 10 or something like that. Okay. So you're going to, you're going to do one more. Okay. So all the examples that we're seeing, you're just going to add one more. YouTube background picker, add one more color. Not so great calculator. Add one more thing that you can do. Come back and look through the code. Try and figure out what it's doing. Follow the logic. All right, that's that's a Smurf that's listening for events. How did I how did I add a value? Let me look how I added values. How did I put a value into like what I was seeing in the in the browser in the DOM? Right. Go back and look at this code. This code are the basic building blocks of everything we're going to do going forward. And so right now you're soaking in, you're seeing how it works, but for your homework, you're going to come back and digest it, spend time with it, work through it and really start to understand what it's actually trying to do. Okay. All right. Now, we had uh, one other of the big four that we're going to start talking about. We talked about variables. Now we're going to start talking about conditions, All right? Conditionals, how we're going to make decisions in our code. But before we can start using conditionals, right? and start making decisions in our code, we got to know how to do comparison. How to see if one value is less than, greater than, or equal to another value. So here is a bit of conditional logic. And what I am saying is if the variable age, whatever number that is holding is greater than 18, then you would put into the console, this is the console here, 
this is the console, you would put you are an adult, right? So it's a little bit of logic. But to understand like how we're gonna do these bits of logic, we gotta understand how JavaScript compares stuff, all right? We gotta understand how JavaScript's gonna compare stuff. So here is how JavaScript compares things. Here I am saying nine, triple equals nine. So all I'm saying is the number nine equals the number nine. That's true, the number nine does equal the number nine. Next line we have seven equals the number three. That's false. The number seven does not equal the number three, right? And then here is the tricky bit with JavaScript. You can even compare strings. So string or piece of text hello does indeed equal piece of text hello. They are both the same value and eventually the same type, okay? Now, where JavaScript gets really weird and where I lose a lot of people, I just saw 20 people, as soon as this slide comes up, 20 people just leave, right? Where I lose a lot of folks is that JavaScript has both double and triple equal signs. It has double and triple equal signs for comparing two values. In JavaScript, <laughs> the I don't know what that emote is. What emote is that, Gabby? That's hilarious. I've seen it many times, so I just don't know what it's called. Um, in JavaScript, when you have two equal signs, you're just looking at value. Just value. Like, does the number three equal the number eight in value? Like, is the number, like, is three equal to eight? No. Three and eight are different values. So, in this very first one, I have a variable x that is assigned the value of three, okay? So wherever I see X, it is three. So does three equal eight in value? No, three is not equal to eight in value, no way. Now where it gets tricky is that down here, we're using three equal signs. When you have three equal signs, you're looking at value and type. The two types we've learned about so far are numbers and strings, like a number and a piece of text. So here, X is number three. And on the right-hand side, we're saying string three. Chat, how do I know it's string three over on uh, the right-hand side? The quotes, exactly, it's the quotes. That's the big indicator that it's a string is, is the quotes, right? So is number three equal to number three in value? Yes, that would be true. But since the three on the right-hand side is in quotes, its type is string. So we're comparing a number three versus a string three. They are not the same. Even though they look the same, one is a number and one is a piece of text. They can't be equal when you're using three equal signs. Two equal signs, we would have been A-OK. -okay. Let me show you. Two equal signs, we would have been fun in the sun. We would have been chilling. We would have been relaxing. True. I add a third equal sign and everyone loses their mind, right? Becomes false, right? Because when we're doing two equal signs, it's just the value, three and three. When we're doing three equal signs, it's the value of three 
But this is a number, like this one is a number, and this one is a string. So the types are different. Two equal signs, just value. Three equal signs, value and type. Cody got it. All right, that's what I'm here for. Boom. <laughs> so now we have two and, and three equal signs. And then every once in a while, you make a mistake and you do something like this. So let me go ahead and clear this real quick. I'm going to say, I'm going to declare a variable called age, and I'm going to set it equal to 25. Indifferent ghost, thank you for the sub. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Wow, what, what a G. Indifferent ghost has given so many, uh, so many gifted subs and is a two month sub themselves. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. <laughs> the Bacal said, I call him deeply invested ghost. Oh, I appreciate that. That's a good name. There you go. All right. So here I've created a variable called age and I set it equal to 25. I've assigned it the value of 25. Thank you for the hydration, Izzy. Cheers to you. I set it equal to the number 25 or we call it assigning. I've signed it the value of number 25. Anvi, thank you for the posture check. All right, there we go. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say age equal 25, and I get true. All right, I get true because age is equal to the number 25, and 25 does indeed equal 25. Now, let's do age triple equals string 25. This is false, right? This is false because age is holding the number 25, right? Age is holding the number 25, right? So we're doing number 25 triple equals string 25, right? So we're saying compare both value and type. The type chat, chat, what is the type of age? What is the type of age, chat? Yeah, it's, a, it's an integer or number, right? Versus a string. Now, I believe I have a warning in the slides somewhere. Here we go. Of assignment versus comparison. So we're, we're, that warning is coming up. And if we look at the inspector, if we ask for age, it should still be there. Age is still 25. Where folks are going to sometimes mess up is they're going to try and do a comparison. They're going to do age equal 32, right? But they forget one of the, they forget one of the equal signs and they hit enter. Now when I ask for age, I'm getting 32. Wait a minute. I tried to do comparison. I tried to do comparison, but since I used one equal sign, what did I wind up doing, chat? Since I used one equal sign, what did I do? Yeah, I re, I, you messed up. <laughs> I reassigned. So what reassignment is, the idea behind reassignment is, let me go ahead and close this, is let's go ahead and create a variable called age. Let age equal 25. That creates a space of memory called age and puts inside of it the value of 25. I can then reassign age to be equal to 32 and what happens is that that value is no longer 25 and is now 32. I could then reassign it later on and do age equal 
55, and then this value is no longer 32, it is now 55. So what we were doing in our actual code, like when we were looking at this code here, these lines, like total equals zero, that's reassignment, right? That one equal sign is reassignment. Whatever that value of total was, it is now reassigned to zero. Right, reassign to zero. So we have two equal signs, which are comparison of just value, three equal signs, which are value and type, and then one equal sign, which is what chat? What is one equal sign? Reassignment, cool. All right, we're not gonna do the rest tonight, folks. There's comparison here, greater than, less than, equal, not equal. We're gonna save those for next time. I don't want, I don't want anybody, I don't want anybody going home and crying. We're gonna, we're gonna move on. <laughs> we're gonna come back to these next class. <laughs> Boo, I want it all. <laughs> I learned my lesson last time. Half y'all left, cried afterwards. We're, we're, we're going to move on. <laughs> what if I'm already crying? <laughs> All right. Talk to vari talked about variables. Now we need to talk about conditionals. Conditionals are just checking, just checking to see if something is true. If the thing is true, you wind up doing what's inside of the curly braces, right? So if whatever is inside of these parentheses is true, the stuff inside the curly braces runs. If this is not true, this stuff does not happen. That's all it does, it's just checking and either doing something or not doing something. All right, here we go. We can have an if, an else if, and an else. An if is the first thing that is checked. If what is inside of here is true, we do cool stuff and then we stop. And then we stop. But if what was inside of here was not true, we check the else if. If what was inside the else if is true, we do this other cool stuff and then we stop. Now the cool thing is in JavaScript, you can have as many else ifs as you want. So you can check an if, then an else if, then an else if, then an else if, and then an else if, and then that's it. You can also include an else. An else is a default. If everything else above it was false, the else automagically runs. It was coming. I wanted to do it on my own terms though. It was coming. I wanted to do it on my own terms, All right? So if, <laughs> if the if is false and all your else ifs are false, the else will automatically run. All right. So here we go. You're gonna notice a different keyword here. There's two keywords that we've seen so seen tonight. Let is the first one we saw. Const is the other one that we that we're gonna see. Both of let and const are both ways of saying, hey, JavaScript, hey, JavaScript, I'm creating a variable. Ooh, look at me, creating, creating a variable. Ooh, creating a variable, Dab. creating a variable, creating a variable, look at me, I'm creating a variable. Both let and const let JavaScript know that you're creating a variable. Don't worry about the difference between let and const yet though. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna get to that next, next class. So here I've created a variable called pizza and I said that it's Domino's. Now the joke is, 
why is Domino's a constant, not a let? I'll let the the folks that did the reading or w- did watch the video and got ahead know why it's a constant, not a let. But uh, let's say that we've cleared, created a variable called pizza and we've assigned it the value of Domino's. All right. Now, let's do our conditional. Does pizza equal Papa John's? Hell no, never Papa John's. Nope, not Papa John's. So do we do anything? Nope, we go to the else if. Does pizza equal Domino's? Yes, that is a true statement. So what would get printed to the console is all aboard the train to Flavortown, right? So since this was false, nothing happened. But then since this was true, Printed to the console was all aboard the train to Flavortown, right? Now, let's say for some weird reason, you misspelled Domino's. You put like an E in it or something. So it's it's Domino's with an E, right? Let's say we originally started this and it was Domino's with an E. Does pizza equal Papa John's? Nope. In this case, does pizza equal Domino's? Nope, because there's a misspelling. One's with an O, one's with an E. All right? So, since the if and the else if were both false, the else automatically runs. It doesn't even need to check anything. It just runs. And into the console, you would see, what are you even doing with your life? I'm hungry. <laughs> if Leon orders Domino's trouble. <laughs> All right. So we have ifs, else ifs. You can have as many else ifs as you want. And then you can have an else. You don't need it. It's just a default that automatically runs. All right. Remember, there's some danger to be had here. There's some danger to be had here. Let's copy this real quick. Going to open up my inspector. Going to go to my console. Pizza equals Domino's. And then let me grab this text here. I'm going to mess with your brain a little bit here. I apologize. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's get rid of these two equal signs and just have one. What just happened? Why di- why didn't I get all the board the train the flavor town? Ah. Because when it's one equal sign, right? That's assignment. It's not comparing anything. It's trying to reassign pizza to Papa John's. That can't happen. Let's try it again. And once we add back even one or two equal signs, we now get all aboard. Let me get out of the way. All aboard the train. All aboard the train to Flavor Town. Woo woo! All aboard the train to Flavor Town. Right. So be careful. If you mistakenly put one equal sign instead of two or three, you're going to get some assignment stuff trying to happen, and that can cause a lot of trouble. So that's the a warning, warning of assignment versus comparison. All right, let's keep moving. We've got about 10 minutes left, and then we're going to call it tonight, folks. 10 minutes left. Let's keep going. Let's dig deep. Let's get in there. All right. With our conditionals, all right, with our conditionals, we can check for multiple things at the same time. All right. Somebody comes to the police station, their name equals Bruce, and their parents are dead. We know we have Batman. We can turn off the bat signal. Right? Turn off the bat signal. We know we got Batman. Both of these conditions were true. If one of these conditions wasn't true, 
then we can't turn off the bat signal because we don't have Batman. All right. We can also do or. So we're looking at two conditions, but only one of them has to be true for us to do the stuff inside the curly braces. So here we're saying if day equals Saturday or day equals Sunday, then we know it's the weekend. So double, whoop, double ampersand is and, and just double pipe character is or. When it's and, both of them have to be correct. When it's or, just one of them needs to be correct. All right, let's take a look at class weekend boring day. Let's go ahead and open up that code. Going to go ahead and uh, open up class weekend boring day index main JS. Let's go ahead and open it in the browser. Uh, what is today? Let's put in Thursday and check. Nothing's happening. Ooh, nothing. Nothing's happening. Uh oh. Nothing's happening. Let's take a look. Let's see what's happening here. All right. So we have this button that we're clicking on called check. It has the idea of check. Let's look at our JavaScript. All right. We got our Smurf. We got our event listener. It's listening for a click on check and it runs check. We're getting the value out of day. So if we go ahead and look, the input where we put Thursday has the idea of day. So what our code is doing is it is getting the day out of that input and storing it in the variable day. But then we haven't done anything. We haven't done anything. What I want y'all to do is to write some conditionals. Give me an if an else if, right? And maybe an else to determine whether it is a class day, weekend, or boring day. So you're gonna need a conditional, an if, an else if, maybe an else, okay? So go ahead, I'm gonna put just uh, three minutes on the clock here because we're a little pressed with time. Three minutes on the clock. Go ahead and try and get the conditional logic working. Look at the slides. Look at the slides. Now, go, run, get it done, try it. Try writing a conditional. <laughs> Look at the slides and then type it out. Look at the slides, type it out. Try and think through it. Try and think through it. Believe in yourself. Got two minutes. Got two minutes. And then we're going to go over it. We're going to go over it. Don't worry. I know it's the first time you're seeing this stuff. I want you to give it a try. Even if, even if you're not going to type it out, try and think through it. Try and think through what it might be. Even if you're not ready to type it out, that's okay. The person can enter in any day. And I want you to say whether it is a class day a weekend or something else or boring, a boring day. So class day, weekend or boring day. Ooh, look at that slide. Ooh. Uh, if you want to, if you want to have control over the slides, you have to remove the uh, slash live. That stops for it, me from me controlling it to you controlling it. But here's, oh, look at our conditional here, our if, our else if, and our else, ooh. Then look at our, our and, the double ampersand, and the or, double pipe character. Look at that, ooh. 
filthy little hobbits with the done. I love it. Zilby done. Nice. Dunzo Nox. Love it. Some tunes. Some tunes while you work. Done and sweaty, Tay. I love it. Accordion at done, done. Sort it. Done, done. All right. Vomit, done. I love it, web dev. Wait. <laughs> I'm just going to shake my Pikachu while I wait. Hear that? That's money. Oh, he's sleeping. I don't know if y'all can see it, but he's sleeping. Oh, that's so cute. Hold on. He's sleeping. Oh, I can get the green screen right. Look at him sleeping. Aww. It's too dark, but he's sleeping, I promise you. Leon, $100 for it. No, this is my retirement account. What are you talking about? <laughs> Come on back, folks. Come on back. Look at all you folks finishing. Well done. Well done. All right, let's take a look at this together. Give him a little kissy. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and take a look at it. All right. So what I want to do is I want to determine if it's a class day, a weekend, or a boring day. So let's go ahead and write out some conditionals here. If we'll start with that. So we're going to say if day equals and let's say um, let's do class. Let's say Tuesday or double pipe character day equals Thursday then we can alert or console log, doesn't matter what we do here. Uh, class, yay. Then we can do an else if. Whoop. We can say else if day equals Saturday or day equals Sunday. We can alert. Alert's just a pop up. Oh, God. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's the let me in meme. Like, let me in. <laughs> There's a hydrate too. I'm I'm slipping on all of these parts. Kaleem, thank you for the hydration. Cheers to you. We need like um I need to build something so Alyssa. There you go. So Alyssa can shock me. There you go, Yash. Alyssa can like press a button and I get shocked, and that's how I know I need to put back the uh <laughs> the little Leon. Alright. So what I said here is I did an if. If day equals Tuesday or day equals Thursday, then we're going to alert class. Yay. An alert is just, um, is just a, uh, a pop-up. Then I'm going to say, if that doesn't work else, if day equals Saturday or day equals Sunday, we're going to alert week and cool. And if it's not Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, or Sunday, we're just going to do an else. We're not even going to check for anything. Then I say else, and we're just going to alert. Boring. <laughs> I did not get the job at Fruit Loops. My body is now your communion. <laughs> Eat from me. <laughs> All right, let's save this. <laughs> Let's save this and uh, go back to the route. Did I open this yet? Yeah, I did. Let's go ahead and save this. Let's refresh. All right, let's do today is Thursday. Woo! 
Woo! Classier. Woo! All right, let's do Saturday. Weekend. And let's do uh, Monday. Boring. <laughs> All right. So we got it working. Now there is some things here that we can do to clean this up. Because here's something I want to show you. If you can get this done for homework, this is a big win. This is like a huge win if you can get this done for homework. What if I did Thursday again? But with a lowercase t. I'm going to get boring because lowercase t, like string Thursday with a lowercase t, is different than string Thursday with a capitalized T, right? And so what I'm gonna ask you to do is for homework, make this work with uppercase or lowercase or it doesn't matter, just make it work. That's a little little bonus for this to make this work, okay? See if you can make that work uh, uh, with any kind of capitalization or anything like that. All right. Give me like give me like three more minutes and then we're going to end it. All right. Just give me three more minutes and we're going to end it. Coding challenges. The first coding challenge will be posted today after class. Uh, so the coding challenge will be a coding challenge today and there will be a coding challenge tomorrow. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to keep submitting them. I'm not going to ask you to submit them until next week. So I'm gonna give you a challenge today. I'm gonna to give you a challenge tomorrow. I'm not gonna to ask you to submit them. Uh, we'll start submitting them next week, okay? Remember, coding challenges start this week, folks. Coding challenges start. All right. Give me like two more minutes and then we'll end it for tonight. All right. Let's code an angry parent simulator. Actually, you know what? Let's save this. Uh, let's save the angry parent simulator and let's save the temperature converter for next class. Cause I, I really, I know folks sometimes have to run right at the three hours. So we're gonna cut it fair for today. Let's talk about your homework over the weekend. Okay, let's go over, let's talk about your homework over the weekend. We're gonna save angry parent simulator. We're gonna save uh, temperature for, for next week. Um, just cause we're already over the three hours. I don't want anybody that has to run to miss it. Okay, so homework. You should plan out your networking. What are you gonna to do to network next week? Are you gonna use the Lunch AI app? Are you gonna find net, are you gonna find your meetups? What are you doing? How are you networking? Plan it out today or tomorrow for all of next week, right? Plan out your networking. I'm gonna ask you to read uh, javascript.info and do the tasks. Read, <laughs> I'm gonna call my grandma. Read javascript.info functions and do the tasks. Then for the examples that we've done, the YouTube picker, not so great calculator, and what is today, pick them apart, see how it's working, right? Add an extra color to YouTube background. Add, a, add another number that you're gonna do to the calculator. Make this work with lowercase or uppercase. Make it do something if Monday was a special day, right? So all three of these I want you to work on. And then once you've modified them and you've changed them, delete all the JavaScript or open up a new template, delete all the JavaScript and type it all out again. And then delete it and type it out all over again. Delete it and type it out. Delete it and type it out until you no longer have to look at the solution to type it out. This is, we're building up the muscle memory here for a few things. One, to make sure you can hit all those special characters. And two, for you to start seeing some of the basic patterns that are gonna repeat themselves over and over in JavaScript. Event listeners, grabbing stuff from inputs, putting stuff into the DOM, right? So, a couple things I need you to do. If you haven't watched that video, the Traversy Media video, you definitely need to catch up and watch that. Today must've been really hard for you if you didn't watch that video. Both of these readings with the task, modifying the problems we've done together, deleting them all and typing them back out, and then doing something special for yourself this weekend. 
I'm going to ask you what you did special for yourself. I want you to tell me. So it's going to be part of the homework that you submit. This is all due Tuesday. All due Tuesday. Now, remember, next week, you're going to have your networking that's due. You're going to have your coding challenges that are due. Right? So you got to get ahead of this stuff, get ahead of the reading, get ahead of all this so that you can have the week to do your networking, to have the week to do your coding challenges. Okay. Unfortunately, there is no office hours this Saturday. Uh, it's the last hackathon for Resilient Coders Philadelphia. And so that'll be the last Saturday that I have to miss. And then office hours will be back to regular. Next week, I am going to do two office hour sessions, though. One more like general questions and one like code. And then we're going to do a stream of doing all the layouts. So a lot of streams coming up soon. Uh, Tuesday will be merch and Minecraft. So lots of good things to look forward to. Uh, like I said, my, dis my Discord's kind of backed up. There's a lot of messages that came in from all the support. I'm going to get to them. You should probably hear back from me by Saturday. Uh, once again, I know this is hard. If this is your first time ever looking at JavaScript, it's okay. A lot of this shouldn't make sense. It's hard. It's difficult. Do the reading. Watch the video. Redo all the assignments. Type them out. And I promise you things will slowly start to drip in. Next week, we're going to go over all this stuff again. We're not going to do anything new. We're going to come back. right? We're going to come back and review. And review until folks feel good with this stuff before we move on. Okay? So make sure you're doing your, uh, there you go, your active recall as you go through all this material. Make sure you're doing your spaced repetition, right? Make sure you're doing all of these things, right, that we know are going to impact you positively as you move through this material. I'm waiving your networking requirements for this week. If you did it, good job. Networking is going to start next week just because we had our off day on Tuesday. Your, your networking really starts next week. Next week, your networking starts. The following Tuesday, uh, I'll ask for everything. All right? I'll be, I'm too soft on you. All right? Don't worry. This week was weird. This week was weird. That's why I'm not asking for you to submit the coding challenges. I'm not asking for you to submit your networking this week. Next week, the networking starts. The coding challenges will be counted. You can kind of relax a little bit. Make sure you do the reading. Make sure you do the things I'm asking you to do and come ready for next week. All right. We're going to do the raid. Uh, please join me in the raid. Send some positivity and love to someone else. Uh, give them some follows. Uh, and uh, once again, I just want to say an overwhelming thank you to everyone that's here. Uh, everyone that sent me a message, everyone that did the kudo board, everyone that was in the discord channel, everyone that came here tonight and showed love. I appreciate you all immensely. Like I really, really do. Uh, it lifted my spirits and I'm excited uh, about all the positive, wonderful people we have in this community, all the folks that are helping each other, all the folks that figure something out, turn around and explain it to somebody else. The folks that have been setting up study sessions to help other folks that aren't getting things done. I see you. I appreciate you. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for being here. Let's build the best freaking community to learn code online. It starts us right here with us, 100 devs. I'm going to set up the raid. I'm going to go hang out in that raid for a little bit. I'll be on Discord this weekend. Even though we're not doing office hours, I'll be on there. Uh, I'll be talking to y'all. I'm going to respond to all your messages. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for the love. Let's go ahead and do a raid. All right. Setting it up right now. Boom. All right. Let's start it. I'll see you over there. Let's send them some love. Send them some positivity. Have a good night, everyone. Peace. Be well. See you on Tuesday.